watch TV, don't read magazines, don't even listen to NPR. Create your own. Absolutely correct. We have assembled an elite lineup of Action Max, and it is going to be action packed. We have new cartoons added to today's lineup. That's right, we have brand new cartoons, three of them to be exact. This many if you're in Germany, but they are awesome. Action packed. Hey, da da fella, but chop. But before we start with that, there is another couple of comic books that I need some help identifying. So, since you guys were so kind last time, I figured I would show them to you and hopefully you can point me in the right direction. We have the Green Lantern, right Hizzle? And, X, well, it's X-Force, but it's Spidey! If you guys could tell me anything about these two comic books, be fantasmarastic! And make sure you come into the live chat so you can be entered into the live drawing. That is absolutely correct. Now, it's not a live drawing, but you need to be in the live chat in order to be eligible for that drawing. You see, we have decided to do another giveaway. So, all you need to do for that is to just come into the live chat today and say hello. Say, good morning, salutations. How are you? That's all you need to do. So, make sure, if you are seeing this, that you say something in the live chat today. Say good morning to us. Say hello. And you will be eligible to win the t-shirt package. And the last thing before we get started. If you Max Squad members have a birthday, let us know. If you have one coming up, tell us when it is, and we will say happy birthday to you. So, Anthony, this is for you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Now, Yuzel, what's pray tell does everyone on Earth need to do at this very moment? They need to go get themselves a heaping bowl yeah. of their favorite part of a balanced breakfast. And stay here with us from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. for cartoons when, Yuzel? Be here for the closer from 12 to 1. And we're not going to tell you what that is, but you got to be here so you can watch it. Make sure that you are always in the only place to be for Saturday mornings. Saturday morning cartoon Maxa! Was just beautiful, Yvonne. Anybody see my hanky? 
I've got it. My hanky? No, the answer to our problems. I found jobs for all of us. Jobs? Why do we need jobs anyway? We're the Toxic Crusaders. Yes, but superheroing isn't a very high-paying profession. And the landlord wants his rent. It's medical benefits, stay. Uh, anything for a hideously deformed creature with superhuman size and strength? Sort of. This ad calls for someone who loves children and doesn't mind getting messy. Close enough. Yvonne, this job calls for a person with a warm heart and superior musical skills. <laughs> Perfect. Looking for someone who really wants to clean up. Forget it, Mop. This one is mine. Oh, here's one for me. Earn big pay, no heavy lifting. What about me? Well, how about this? Looking for someone who is outgoing and has a large nose. It's a stretch, but I'll try. <laughs> A bicycle wheel has a spoke. The white of an egg is the... Albumin. Yolk. I'm sorry, Leo. The answer is the albumin. If I wasn't the bad guy, I could really clean up on these shows. I don't like to kill him off. But stop to kill him off to you. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Killamorph. It won't happen again. Anyway, like I was saying, I don't like to kill him. I, I mean, Dr. Killamorph. You're talking about messing with the food that little kids love to eat. I'll give you half the profits. Dale, I hate kids anyway. This is perfect. Everyone in Tromoville eats a purple burger. Yeah, they got great fries. Exactly. And once I adjust those fries to my evil purpose, I'll control the people of Tromoville. Then no one can stop me from polluting this disgustingly clean little town. And once I pollute Tromoville, the rest of the world is mine. What happens if one of the Toxic Crusaders gets a job at Burpo Burger and foils your plan? Impossible! Imagine a Toxic Crusader working at Burpo Burger. Ridiculous. My plan is flawless. <laughs> Even now, the defender is working on the most dastardly part of my plan. <laughs> Here, my friend, one taste of this, and you'll turn into a forgetful, nearsighted old rat. No, no, this is the 81st patch, and it still isn't right. I need to test this right away. I need a human guinea pig. I need... Aha! Hey, Stretch, is this where the evil genius Dr. Bender hangs? Yes, yes, I'm the evil genius Dr. Bender. Cool, I got a telegram from a Dr. Kilimoff. How touching, he remembered my birthday, and that's more than I can say for my evil genius mother. Here's a little message just for you, tell Tilly Tally I need the kill. If you fail, you'll die today. Sincerely yours, Dr. K. What kind of a birthday greeting is that? Hey, I don't write them. I just sing them. Yeah, no matter. Have some soup. No thanks, Doc. I'm a vegetarian. Why don't you just give me a tip and we'll call it even? Ah! Look out! Oh, I hate this job, man. Yeah, look out! The Adam Smasher! Don't touch anything! And turn off that infernal radio! Hey, it's your telegram. He can't! The Atom Smasher made us into one person! So unsmash us, man! I don't know how! Bummer. It's gonna be a little tough picking up chicks. Say, do you like sushi, Doc? I can't wait. I'm really gonna clean up in this job. You sure are. And you can start by dusting the window display. Yo, lady, should I start here? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. It's become a forgetful, nearsighted old rat. Like I always say, the 82nd time's the charm. 
Oh, what is that goo? This isn't just any goo. This is... Ah, my arm! What's wrong with my arm? It doesn't work! Sure it does. Hi, Doc. Hi! Ah, as I was saying, this isn't just any goo. Anyone who eats it will turn into a forgetful, nearsighted old person. Pull off that paper. I call it McGoo 82. Gross. Why'd you make it? Because it's exactly what Dr. Killamoff ordered. <laughs> Enough for everyone. Oops, I'll get another. Now be careful with that stuff, huh? Spread it good all over the potatoes. Oh. Thanks, Flossy. I always hated this shirt. Now I won't have to wear it anymore. Glad I could help. Flossy, it's Mama Jones you're acting up. Oh, they sure are. I better find out why fast. It's working perfectly. In just a few moments, my radiation rangers will have spread the Magoo 82 over the whole potato patch, setting my plan into full swing. I don't know. What if the Toxic Crusader's traumatons start acting up and he shows up and beats all our guys to a pulp? Don't be a fool! Bonehead is in charge, and I know I'm going to be proud of him. Dr. Killamoff's going to be proud of me. Maybe I'll get a promotion. Maybe I'll get a raise. Maybe he'll stop slapping me around. It's Killamoff's Radiation Rangers. They're polluting the potato patch with toxic chemicals. That's un-American. you got to stop them, Toxie. Right. You know what you need. A uh, good luck kiss? Uh-uh. A battle cry. I do? Uh-huh. Something to yell before you do battle that'll strike fear in the hearts of your enemies. Something like, it's clobbering time, or hi-ho, Silva! Hmm, uh, wait, I got it. I hope I don't get hurt! <sighs> we'll work on it. Look out! It's a toxic crusader! Stop him! Yeah, now finish off the toxic troublemaker! Oh, man, now what? <laughs> Mashed potatoes! You gotta do better than that to beat me! Hey, what happened? Yeah, what happened? The mashed potatoes, they must have clogged up the intake vents on his life support system. He's over Oh, yeah! Don't oh, you coward! Right Back in the truck, Claire. Hey, you think you won, don't you? Well, go have some purple fries on me! Happy <laughs> you beat them! No, I mashed them. Whatever. I wonder what they were up to. Don't worry, Toxie. I'm sure we'll find out in Act Two. Yeah. Why do they call them purple burgers, Dad? Ah, uh, don't ask. Hi, kids. It's me, Burpo Magicius. And we're gonna have fun. Burpo is my name. Illusions are my game. And if you think I really think I'll tell you think the same. Ta-da! Boy, a tough crowd. Hi, kids. How about some balloon animals? Ta-da! It looks like a foot. Well, uh, it is a foot. You know how hard it is to sculpt body parts? I wonder when I get a coffee break. Okay, this is the first patch of purple fries made from potatoes treated with Magoop 82. Kill, purple fries are the best. Nah, don't eat those, fool. I will turn into forgetful, nearsighted old men. Yuck, I thought they just made you fat. They're not talk. I want results. Show me that it works. Chill, Chief. 
We told the staff here not to eat any of the new Burpo fries because they were extra special. So what? So, of course, they ate them right away. Hey, let's see you coming. Oh, no. Excuse me, Chubby. You know where the restroom is? Yeah. Find it yourself, old man. Uh, find what? Uh, the rest of the purple fries will be ready this afternoon. Perfect! Soon all of Trollerville will be full of forgetful, nearsighted old people, and nothing will stop me from making this town my pollution headquarters. Suburban Branch. Like I said before, what if one of the Toxic Crusaders gets a job here and discovers your plan? Ridiculous! What are the odds of that happening? They love me. I'm a hit. Uh-oh. Looks like the odds are pretty good. I don't suppose you guys would like some balloon edibles. Ice cream! Ice cream! Get it before it gets away! How's business, Toxie? Oh, terrible. No one likes warm ice cream. How's your job, Major Disaster? I got fired just because I broke a couple of bowls. I lost my job, too. They didn't appreciate good music. John! This is great! I've been going door to door, and I sold five of these babies already. You might say I'm sweeping the town. That's great, Mom. What's your secret? I just get in the house, and I tell them it's so heavy that I might have a heart attack if they make me take it out again. <laughs> it's the old sympathy game. I thought the job said no heavy lifting. This is nothing. You should see the deluxe model. Gotta run. Lots more to sell. Let's go see how No Zone is doing at Burpo Burger. Hey, hey, wait, wait. What happened? What? I don't know where I am. Where am I? I always wondered why this place had such bad service. Excuse me, have you seen our friend Nozone? Yeah, you, you mean the funny-looking guy with the big nose who sneezes all the time? Yeah. Yeah, never saw him. So where is he? I could be wrong, but I think he was taken to the laboratory of an evil genius scientist. How do you know that? Because it says so right here. We took your friend to the laboratory of the evil genius, Dr. Bender. Come and get him. It's signed, your pal, Dr. Kilimoff. Heal it, magician. It's good for you. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Toxic Crusaders. The Toxic Crusaders have two new members. Junkyard, a mutation with a taste for doggy bones, and Headbanger, half mad scientist, half party animal. They've joined to keep Dr. Killamoff and Psycho, his cybernetic sidekick with a bionic brain, from polluting and conquering the Earth. Also, because good guys get the babes. You don't have to be toxic to be popular, but it helps. Toxic Crusaders. They're gross. But they still get girls. Hideously deformed action figures from Playmates. Heal it, magician. It's good for you. Hey, if it's that good, I'll eat it myself. Are you always this stupid? I don't know. Let me think. <laughs> Never mind. Come on. What are you doing? Don't worry. We're just getting ready for your friends. They should be here any minute. Cool. A party. I'll make the dip. You are the dip. Yay! The good guys! Whoa! Do something! I'm trying! I'm trying! Wow, what a ride! You're not a very nice guy. Or couple of guys. Or whatever you are. Hey, how about some wrinkle cream, Toxic Crusader? Throw it! No, he's a cool superhero. Throw it! Ah! All right already. I wish you'd stop doing that. Holy cow! Ah, you idiot! Oh, I give up. You did it! I did. I'm saved! I'm dead. Yoo-hoo! Toxic Crusader! I'm in here! I hope I don't get hurt! Yvonne's right. It needs work. Sneaky, Doc. Very sneaky. 
I'm too young to be old. Hang on, buddy. <laughs> Hurry! Oh, doesn't look good, Doc. It's good to be Toxy. Hey, now that's catchy. Let's get out of here! Help! He thinks I'm blood! Hold on, no zone. We're coming. Thanks, Toxy. It was getting awful hot in there. Bye, hero. What in places is going on here, Nozone? It's this goo. It turns people into forgetful, nearsighted old folks. Say, this looks like the stuff Bonehead was spraying on the potatoes in Act One. That's right. And you know what they make out of potatoes, don't you? Sweaters? No, purple fries. The next time they eat, they'll be ordering off the seniors' menu. Special on purple fries. Two for one. Get your purple fries. Good. It's not too late. Yeah, no one's eating any bad fries yet. The Toxic Crusaders! You guys mind the store. I got an evil plan to carry out. Attention, everyone. The evil genius Dr. Bender has put a chemical on the burple fries. If you eat them, you'll turn into forgetful, nearsighted old folks. Baloney! Hey, what's going on here? It works! I'm amazing. I'm an evil genius. Evil genius, huh? Hey, hiya, Toxy. Say, what's going on here anyway? Is it Senior Citizen's Day or something? Not now, Yvonne. I'm trying to beat up on a bad guy. Okay, Mr. Evil Genius and the other guy, prepare to be seriously hurt. Uh, yeah, yeah, in a minute. Who's the rad babe? Who, Yvonne? She's my beautiful, though somewhat light, girlfriend. You've got a girlfriend? I may be a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength, but I am a good guy. I knew we should have been a good guy. The bad guys never get the checks. That's the first smart thing you've said this whole episode. Say, ready for that beating now? Ah, uh, forget that. We want to be good guys now. Yeah, we want to be toxic crustaceans like you guys. As long as we get to hang out with cool babes like Yvonne. Well, I can't promise anything, but she does have a sister. Good enough. We're good guys now. Not so fast. I mean, you're certainly hideously deformed enough, but I think you should at least come up with an antidote to help all these poor people before we let you be a toxic crustacean. Crusader. Whatever. But there is no antidote. I just love purple fries. Anybody want some? You are! No! Hey, there's something wrong with these fries. Whoa! Whoa. They taste like... like... I don't get it. She ate the same fries as everyone else. Yeah, how come she's not old? I'll tell you a secret. I don't eat them plain. I like to put pepper on them. That's it. Pepper. Pepper is the antidote. It turns the Magoop 82 into bubblegum. I'm pretty tasty at that. Okay, I found the antidote. So are we toxic crusaders or what? Well, actually, Yvonne found the antidote, but what the hey? Rad! Attention, everyone! Put pepper on your fries, and you'll turn back to normal! We'll help them later. We gotta stop Dr. Killamoff from spraying all the vegetables with Magoop 82. Even the broccoli? Yep, even the broccoli. Ooh, now I am mad. In a few minutes, every vegetable will be covered with Magoop 82, and Trumbleville will be mine! Unless the Toxic Crusaders come up with an antidote. You know, I'm really sick of you. <gasps> We're too late. We'll never stop them. We're not done yet. What's that? Pepper. Oh, no. I hate pe pe pepper. Ready? Drop! Trollville is mine. Next stop, the world. <laughs> Give it all you got, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. Ah! Ah! What's that? What's that? It looks like speed. It looks like antidote to me. No! No! Yes! Yes! You did it, 
Lord knows all who save the vegetables. Even the broccoli. I hope everyone likes their vegetables well done. I hate those toxic crusaders. Now that you're a uh, toxic crusader, what do we call you? Well, I'm Fender. I'm Fender. Gee, that kind of confusing. We need just one name for both of you. Ow! Ha, that's it. We'll call you Headbanger. Why? And although it looks like none of us can hold down real jobs, except Mom, of course, we have our newest crusader to thank for inventing the product that's going to make us all rich and famous. Gentlemen, introducing the newest, the best, the coolest bubblegum ever invented. We call it Macoop 83. I even know that new jingle. Oh, yeah, Macoop 83. It's a bubblegum for me. A bubble big and bold, and it won't make you old. Oh, oh yeah, Macoop 83. It's a bubblegum for me. A bubble big and bold, and it won't make you old. Oh, yeah, Macoop 83. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. What a meal, what a meal, a home full of cereal, what a meal, what a meal, a home full of cereal. Someone asks me what I like to eat I tell them what makes my dinner time complete I stop eating all of the food It's not uncivilized, it's not crude Who needs the four food groups when you
Grad. Not another one of these insipid KT Slayer commercials. What I need is some fresh new blood. Kid, yeah you! Never wear anything but spikies or I'm coming after you! For real! Spikies! The official shoe of the Mutant League! We're back with the Mutant College Championship! There's only time for one more play! I'll start Bunk Justice as Mutant State in position to win in this, his last college game! Alright Muters, it's time to jam it home. Razor, run a deep post. Razor. What's up, Bones? Oh, sorry. Fly. I'm going short? Long. Flat? Post. I'm there. Cool. Everybody else, just make sure the pocket holds up. Let's go out champions. Bang! Bam! Listen to them cheer those nobody! How the public yearns for a new hero. I'm their hero! For now. <laughs> Katie, maybe they're growing tired of having a Neanderthal <laughs> as their role model. E ease up, Cat. It matters not who the hero is, as long as he plays for me. 22! You're going down, Bones! Bring on the noise. This is it, guys. Hunt! 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 Go, Raze! What a move by Razor! Fucking Bones hit him! There's that famous Bones Justice stiff arm! Lasky didn't have a chance! Goodbye, head! But hold on! Don't count Lasky out yet! His head game has been good all day! Gets the pass off, but it's high! Too high! He got it! What a play! Bounce justice to Riser Kid for the winning touchdown! What a spectacular finish for two spectacular careers! Bones is incredible. And that Lizoid's not bad either. With those two on my team, the Mutant League Championship will be mine for the next ten years. Okay, listen, uh, I gotta run. Okay, why are you staring at me? Uh, I'm not staring. There, you're doing it again. Okay, I just can't believe you don't want to even think about Prig's offer. Raze, Prig is single-handedly destroying the Mutant League. When my dad played, it was about teamwork and real competition. Then bam, dad's gone. Prig wins the cup and turns the league into a freak fest? Yeah, but the norms pay crazy dollars to watch. Oh, come on, watch what? A bunch of mutants maiming each other? Prig's using the league to sell fake athletics and real violence. No amount of money can make me play for that mutant. Let's see if we can change that. Mr. Prig is doubling his offer. Doubling? Come on, Bones, I can get some hype stuff with that kind of cash. Get out of here. I said go. Not till I have my answer. Read my lips. N-O. Not yours, his. Uh, my answer is no. Now get stepping. No. Bones won't budge. We're talking brick wall, boss. Mm. Bones and Razor are inseparable, correct? Um, if we get one, we'll get them both. Sign Razor and spare no expense. I never do. Hey, KT. It looks like those new heroes are playing instead. Uh. I mean, with you. Zalgor! Yes, Mr. Slayer. 
You sign those two rookies, and I'll destroy them! Is that so? I'm not kidding. There'll be nothing left but two little puddles of mute. Are you quite finished? Yeah! Don't you ever make the mistake of thinking you can tell me what to do. I own you! I tell you what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Understood. Yeah, sure, Mr. Prig. Now don't forget, we meet Mrs. M at four. Only you would want to play for the cheapest team in the league. Hey, she's the only owner Prig can't buy. I'm with you. Hey, team? Yeah, team. Bam! Yo, wanna go for a ride? Can't you take no for an answer? No. Whoa! <laughs> yeah! Pal, slow down, please. This car is just too hype. Mr. Prig knew you'd like it. Join the sleighs, and it's yours. See this? Yeah, so? It's got your name on it. Track, watch your track. Look, I only agreed to talk, man. I cannot, repeat, cannot dis bones and sign with you. Who's talking about dis and bones? You are the real star. You should be on a championship team. Bright lights, embrace it. Wouldn't bones want you to do what's best for you? Stay right here, we'll be back after these messages. Kids play harder than anybody else, and there's nothing like a kid's big first. Oh yeah, I'm on my way. You can feel it coming home, and you got to, got to have some. Here I come to save the day. Got to, got to have some now. It's Kool-Aid to the rescue. So one more kid's big first. So I see, refreshing and bright, yeah. You got to, got to have some more. Kool-Aid brand soft drink mix for a kid's big thirst. Bones, check out this car. Bro, we gotta talk about the Slayers. Oh, man, I... don't tell me you sold out. I thought we were a team, man. Stay with me, Raze. Oh, we can be a team. You're blowing Prig out of proportion. The guy's not that bad. Besides, he pays serious wad. In blood money, mutant blood. Oh, come on, Bones, think. You'll be living large, and you can help people all you want. Well, now I get it. Prig's using you to get me to sign. No, 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 no. Nobody's playing me, Bones. I'm a star, too, you know? You must be real proud. Have a nice career, bro. Yeah, well, you too. Hey, I hope you like last place. Eat dead, eat dead, eat dead, eat dead. Eat dead. Bones, sweetheart, I'd love to sign you, but the monsters have no fans. We have no ratings, and therefore no dollars. <laughs> I can't afford you. Daddy, stop that. <laughs> We're a bad team. It's not like it used to be when your father <laughs> played. It can be. No, it's Zalga's league now. I'm the only one crazy enough to even try and stand up to him. But we can do it. The monsters can be a great team again. I'd like to believe you. Then do. All right. Welcome to the monsters. At league minimum. Oh, by the way, I thought you said Razor Kid was coming. Yeah, well, I thought so too. Bones, 
turn down his own best friend? Yeah, c can you believe that guy? Bones is dangerous. I can feel it. I can't risk losing the cup. It's the foundation of my empire. You said it, man. He won't even sign a play with his best friend. Then he'll sign to save him. <laughs> Fetch Katie Slayer. It's time to let him off his leash. <laughs> A penalty is only a penalty if the ref calls it. And this is practice, so I don't see no ref. Quit your crying, you're a mutant. It'll grow back. Razor, convince Bones to side with me, or next time even the Rejuvenator won't heal you. Bones. He's critical now, but he'll pull through. Prick, can't get away with this. You, Juka, get that Razor Kid back to practice now. But he hasn't completed the rejuvenation process. My heart bleeds. Now get him on the field pronto. Do it and you'll deal with me. I'm gonna put a stop to this now. No, squash that, Bones. Man, this isn't like college. These guys are too tough. Don't take him out of there. We got business. Mr. Justice, I've been expecting you. Please, do come in. Let Razor out of his contract. Don't push me, punk, or there'll be nothing left of him but small, useless chunks of lizard. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? As long as I continue to win, the world envies me. They want to be in my... Circle. I'm offering you one more chance. Join the Slayer. Never. Oh, too bad for both you and your friend. He can't take another practice. Most likely not. Even if he were healthy, no rookie has a chance against KT. Wanna bet? Bet? <laughs> bet what? If the monsters beat the Slayers tomorrow, Razor's contract gets torn up. <laughs> if the Slayers win, then you get what you want. Me. <laughs> the monsters haven't got a chance. Then you have nothing to worry about, do you? Done. You're mine. <laughs> Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. When they come alive, evil can't survive. Gargoyles. Disguised as a gargoyle, the evil Xanatos swoops into attack. But mighty Goliath breaks free. Lexington fires. And heroic Brooklyn charges into battle on the Ripon Rider cycle. Get him! Xanatos is stunned, and Goliath flies in to unmask him. Adios, Xanatos! When gargoyles come alive, evil can't survive. Gargoyles eat so separately. What do you mean, if, darling? We have never beaten the Slayers. I can't let Razor down. We're gonna have to find a way to win. Oh, sure, we can pay off refs like Zalga or cheat like KT. No, we're gonna win straight up. Right, guys? <laughs> You've got one practice to get this team in shape. Good luck. I'll need it. Monsters! Monsters! Line up! Tam's money! <laughs> Mo, Sputer, come on, let's go! Time to practice! Let me eat dirt! Let me eat dirt! Eat dirt! <laughs> I said practice is starting now! <laughs> But he said I don't know much about coaching. Is that right? Sure is. So what? 
<laughs> Why are you coaching? Money. Team ain't got none. Okay, here's the deal. You're still the coach, but I tell you what to do. When you make a cut, shift the ball to your outside hand. The only way we're gonna win is by playing great defense and waiting for a break. Then, we're gonna win it with a long pass to Mo. But Bones, Mo's got bad hands. <laughs> exactly. They won't even cover you. Just concentrate, look the ball in. I know you can do it. So let's hit it. Bam! Well, good luck with the Slayers. Uh, can I have my whistle back? We open the season today with a football game between the Midway Monsters and the Slay City Slayers! I'm gonna pulverate them! Hey, what's that? A little added feature I call battle pads. They're strong enough to pierce through bone. Or bones, as the case may be. I don't need these. Don't flatter yourself. And another beautiful block by Bones. This guy's all over the field. The monsters have the ball, and Bones scores. With time winding down, this has almost single-handedly kept the monsters close. A slay a touchdown now will put the game out of reach. Come on, Bones, you can do it. You and Razor are dead meat, Bones. Hot, hot, hot. JT drops back, but so does Bones. Slay has an open yeah. man, but here comes Justice. KT gets the pass away. Unbelievable! An interception! Ah! Now there's only KT Slayer between Bones Justice and an incredible upset victory! our chance. Mo, get ready. This one's coming to you. Uh, you can do it. I believe in you. Uh, Let's jet. Go, go Monsters! Hunt one! Uh, KT. The pass is off. Mo is under it, but can he catch? We won, darling! We won! <laughs>
just gotta believe. I'll get you Bones Justice. You'll never last the Caesar. Today's MLSN replay features Bones Justice and his incredible step arm. A clean separation of head from torso that's good for two weeks in the rejuvenator for sure. Don't move, another action-packed lineup from Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Somewhere in deep space, a passenger rocket follows its routine course through the star. This is Interplanet Space Lines, flight 829er to control. We're on schedule and hold it to unidentified objects approaching. What are they? I don't know. They remind me of something I've seen before. Something deadly. <gasps> Look! There's some sort of... of space sharks. They're attacking. Hang on. Meanwhile, on the ghost planet, home base of the famous Space Ghost. Space Ghost, you sure picked a perfect spot for lunch. Yes, there's nothing like an old-fashioned picnic. Right, Blip? You know, that's a trouble with you guys. Always thinking old-fashioned. Uh-oh. More words of wisdom from Big Brother. I have been around longer than you, Jan. Jace, we're twins, remember? You're only two minutes older than me. Well, a kid can learn a lot in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, like how to be impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you see this? It's the modern way to picnic. Just add one drop of water and presto. No mess, no fuss. But no taste, either. <laughs> All right, go ahead and laugh. But this stuff is so simple, anybody can make lunch with it. Even Blip. Whoa! I said lunch, not a smorgasbord. <laughs> <laughs> An emergency distress signal. Let's go. According to my instruments, a passenger rocket disappeared in mid-flight. We're nearing its last position now. Gosh, what do you think happened, Space Ghost? <laughs> Unless I miss my guess, Jan. Here comes your answer now. Sputter and space dust. What are they? I don't know, but brace yourselves. Nice move, Space Ghost. This job does have its ups and downs. Here they come again, and they're gaining fast. Then we'll go where they can't follow, through that asteroid belt ahead. All right. Here's where we separate the men from the sharks. Don't count on it. Look! <laughs> Smoke and rockets! We can't outrun them, Space Ghost! Then that settles it, Jace. Take the controls. I'm going fishing! Okay, my hungry friends, come and get it! But I hope you like your lunch with plenty of hot sauce. <laughs> That 
away, space ghost. <laughs> Crumlin comets. Those space sharks are mechanical. Where's the map? They're self-repairing. Oh. I'm fine, Jan. It's you three that they're after now. I'll try to freeze their control pins. Jan! Jace! Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Space Ghost. But we're in a whale of a mess. Well, whales are blubbery buffoon. Sharks are supreme. Who are you? I am Remora of the water planet of Liquo. And now you are my prisoners. Looks like there's only one way in, through the front door. Knock, knock. Thanks, pal. Ooh. I know you're not going to believe this, fellows, but I forgot the secret password. I was right. They didn't believe me. As you can see, I've collected quite a few souvenirs from your space lane. And there are many more in my other shark ship. But what about the passengers and crews? They are all here, safe and sound. <laughs> and now you're going to join them. What? It's time you picked on someone your own size, like me. Galloping Galaxy Space Ghost? He's just like an electric eel. Block them up with the others. Quick! The invisible power! <laughs> Jan, Jace, free everyone! Get them aboard their ships! Right! Come on, Blip! You fools! You'll never outrun my space sharks! We won't have to, Remora! Sharks are their own worst enemies, remember? When one is injured, the rest of the pack will turn on it. No! What have you done? You'd better board the nearest ship as fast as you can. All right, move them out. We're on our way. But what about you, Space Ghost? This shark's liable to blow any minute. All the passengers are out now, and I have a little unfinished business. Save me some dessert. My beautiful shark ships. I must save them. It's too late, Ramora. Now you're coming with me. Stay away. Thus, justice returns to the space lanes and another interstellar criminal heads for prison. Thanks to the courage and daring of Space Ghost! Swamp Thing! You are amazing! You fight it!
Found another trap, Tomahawk. As fast as we find them, the poachers set out more. Feels like a losing battle, Swamp Thing. Don't tell our little buddies that. They're counting on us. Whoa! Whoa. Fast enough for you, Demo! It's Dr. Demo, my reckless friend. Too much speed and our lives will end. Skidman, beware! Listen to me, we're going to crash into that tree! Ah! What's one less tree, Demo? Swamp Thing! Oh. Oh. I got it! Forget what I said about a losing battle. With your power, I'd say Mother Nature still stands a chance. Everybody has a hobby. Guess I just like gardening. Those unmen creeps were in a hurry. Any idea why? It's hard to say, but we know where they're going. The Arcane Plantation. Something's up. Didn't you tell Dr. Arcane we were coming back tonight? Like all fools, you are too quick to sneer. Dr. Arcane's evil is very near. Do you have it? This so-called miracle chemical? Behold, in my hat is something new. The miracle, as I promised you. It's a miracle that we even found this stupid sap. Had to go all the way to South America for one lousy bottle? Enough, Skin Man. A simple test will prove Demo's claims about the Zingu tree. Since when's my stepfather interested in trees? The ancients believed the Zingu was a magic tree. In its sap lies the secret of immortality. We shall see. The transducer. It's registering longevity levels I've never seen before. With this sap, I could live forever. But I'll need massive quantities for my experiments. Took a week of chopping through the jungle to come up with that much. Skinman's words are painfully true. Many trees fell to find but one Zingu. Tear down the whole rainforest if you must. But I want every drop of Zingu sap! My immortality will not be denied! I've got to warn Swamp Thing. Incredible! Abby, this drop of sap you snuck from Arcane's lab shows biogenetic properties beyond human knowledge. It's called Zingu. I've heard of that. An old Amazon legend says that the Zingu tree sap is a powerful medicine. Alec, it's not a legend. This Zingu stuff is real, and my stepfather will do anything to find it. Even ravage the Amazon rainforest. The rainforest produces oxygen for the entire planet. It's one of our most valuable ecosystems. Before Arcane can plunder the Amazon, he'll have to get by me. But my stepfather's already at his airstrip. Get Tomahawk and buy you, Jack. Meet me there. I've got a plane to catch.
time, Dr. Demo, is precious. Each moment we wait keeps me from my immortality. Preparing for takeoff, Dr. Arcane. All has been loaded aboard our plane. Keep your hat on, Demo! Yeah! The transducer's not even loaded yet! Then I suggest you misfits get it aboard now! Yes, sir, Dr. Arcane. You got it! Something out there? Get a grip, weed killer! We're too late! The plane's taking off! Don't worry, Jack. Swamp Thing was right on time. How'd you like to take a little vacation? To the Amazon? I'm with you. The rainforest. Immortality grows wild down there, and it will be mine. Hmm. Some flight. No snacks, no movie. <laughs> I think I'll speak to the man in charge. Is somebody back there? Yeah. Something green. Something that needs plant poison. This plant doesn't stand still for your poison weed killer. You're trapped, Muck Monster. This time, there's no escape. Ugh. I'll pass on the chemtoxins, but maybe your pals are interested. Ah! <clears throat> you fools! He's lost control! That's a thousand foot drop. The leafy freak doesn't stand a chance. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Swamp Thing rises again to crush evil Arcane's monster maker. Help! Arcane has got me in his clutches. With my transducer, I can create an army of unmanned monsters. Save me, Swamp Thing! Snap up! Swamp Thing rises to the rescue! Ah! Can Swamp Thing save him? Yes! Now for a taste of your own medicine! Gotcha! Swamp Thing, Guardian of the Earth. New transducer, Snap Up Swamp Thing, Arcane and Bio Jack, each sold separately. Swamp Thing is fish food. I guess the plant man's been overwatered. <laughs> oh. Oh. Arcane. Gone. Now oh, to find Arcane before he does any real damage. Skin Man, I must find more Zingle Trees. I don't care if we have to rip out this entire rainforest. At the rate we're going, Dr. Arcane, we will! Ah! Come on, fella. This always works in the circus. Oh, wait a minute. I know what this lion tamer's missing. All right, it's okay. You can come out now. A tree that walks? My grandfather has told me of such a spirit. A guardian of the earth. Call me Swamp Thing. I am Pico. 
The jaguar was scared. All the animals are scared. A fierce machine with jaws like knives has destroyed their home. Arcane's Bayou Blaster. It must be stopped. Grandfather, Swamp Thing's here to help. He saved my life. You have my gratitude. I am just an old blind shaman. But what my eyes can't see, my heart can feel. My powers are no match for the destruction of the forest. <gasps> you are a tree. Easy, shaman. It's okay. I knew the forest would send us an avenging spirit. Yes, shaman. The forest will win. Stop! I see one! A single tree. On men to action! This chem toxin packs enough wallop to make a redwood a dead wood. There it is! The tree killer machine! The destruction is worse than I thought possible. Even for Arcane. A Zingu tree! They have pulled it from the earth! The Zingu is sacred to my people. You'd better head back home, Pico. I'll drop in on Arcane. Amazing! Caution, my unmen. I don't want to lose a drop of this golden sap. Superb! Immortality is at hand! Now get back to work! But... we got the stuff! This is just the beginning. I need more. Much more for my immortality experiments. And with Swamp Thing out of the way, we will have all the time in the world. I'm bringing this operation down! Ooh, decimate him! Oh! Ugh. Where are my young men? Ugh. That Zingu sap doesn't belong to you, Arcane! You're the sap swamp thing! The lock man's lost it! He'll be exhausted! Hey, Demo! I made a rhyme! Uh, pollution. Need fresh air. Excellent, my unmen. Now hurry! The time to unleash your true powers is at hand. And once we're done with Swamp Thing, the forest is mine! Need fresh water. <laughs> oh, poison! Good guess, slime face! At last, Weed Killer has proved his worth. Swamp Team can't escape into the poisoned earth. We have a forest to strip. Let's juice him! Drop him into the extractor. No way we'd let you fight this battle alone. Here you go, pal. This'll snap you out of it. Uh, swamp water? Swamp water? Well, you guys are a sight for red eyes. But how did you get here with my marsh buggy? Piece of cake. War buddy of mine pilots a cargo plane. Knew you'd want your wheels. Ah! 
three for the price of one. I am inches away from immortality. That mockery of a man will not ruin it. If you want a mutation done right, mutate yourself. Let's get busy! Stop! Pico, you two shouldn't be out here. Yeah, don't worry, kid. We'll kick the bad guys out. This battle is our own. I can help. You have a deep contact with nature. Yes. Yes, you can help. The shaman will lend us his very valuable support. Let's go! Ah. Coming at you, weed killer! <laughs> the Zingu's secrets Arcane must learn. So the Unmen army will slash and burn. <clears throat> Excellent! Soon every Zingu tree will be mine! Forget it, Arcane. You've chopped down your last tree. Oh, please! Just one more! I want to chop down... Yo! You dare attack Anton Arcane! Oh. Next time, Arcane, wear a seatbelt. Unman attack! Oh. What's your hurry, Tomahawk? The fun has only begun! Cool! Then I'm just in time! Dr. Arcane! Tomahawk and the kid are getting away! Everything's okay now, Pico. Help! Ah! Welcome to my parlor, said the spider to the boy. Don't want your little friend to get lonely, do you, Tomahawk? Swamp Thing! On my way! S Swamp Thing! Should learn to watch his back. Now face Dr. Demo's surprise attack. So long, Green Guts! <clears throat> I told the animals the danger, and they've come to defend their home. Thanks, Shaman. Now for Arcane. Swamp Thing won't come near me while I have you as my prisoners. You're right, Arcane. But that doesn't mean you won't come to me. You may have defeated me, Swamp Thing, but your precious rainforest is in ruins. Stand back, guys. Maybe it's time you fellas try something a little different. Swamp Thing's mutating them. Into trees! It's only temporary. But maybe now they'll know how the trees feel. That arcane couldn't stick around for the lesson. It's too late. I can feel that my rainforest is gone. 
Don't give up, Grandfather. The Guardian of the Earth will help us. There are limits to what my powers are capable of. But perhaps if I can combine my plant powers with the Zingu Sap... Okay, now let's see if I still have my green thumb. It worked! The trees have returned! Swamp Thing, you did it! The guardian of the earth has saved the rainforest! No, I've only given the trees a second chance. Only mankind can truly save the rainforest. We must all be guardians of the Earth. So come on and fight for right. We need you, Swamp Thing. Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. the sign of the old well Dalva. It's the poor what gets uh, the blame, while the rich has all the gravy. Now ain't that a blanking shame? Put out those lights! Schultz! It will be exactly 6.45 and one quarter. 
Schulz? Forty-five and one quarter. Mm. May I present you with this little token of our esteem? For me? Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. Oh, uh, just a little going away present. Well, see you around.
does one defeat an enemy that possesses the ultimate weapon? Invincibility. Worse still, how does one defeat an enemy that exists within one's very soul? A battlefield can exist in many places, including within one's own heart. makes me miss my flesh. Such utter annihilation would give me goosebumps. The humans have piqued my curiosity, however. What in the world has made them willing to fight us so fiercely here on this dismal bit of swamp? Why do they insist on fighting us at all? How many battles must they endure before they realize that we are invincible? <laughs> For the Legion of Light! Legion of Light? Oh, please. <laughs> Come now, physician. Heal thyself. I'm getting a pulse indicator. For the Legion of Light. Cavalry's arrived. What? Leaving so soon? Oh no! We would need of it, would we? <laughs> Why the party's just starting. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Know this, young prince. The skeleton warriors are led by foul men and dark and will stop at nothing. Once they were men, but served the force so evil it devoured everything, leaving only their bones. They are advancing towards you, young prince. Oracula, armed to the teeth. Dr. Cyborg, the high-tech horror. The slow but dangerous dagger. All of your allies have fallen, save Lightstar and his companions. Skeleton warriors, they're back to the bone. Mad balls. mad balls, mad balls, gross for one, gross for all. We play with a mad ball, they're gross, funny, yucky, sick. There's eight, so you can take your pick. We throw, catch, it's uh oh fun. There's so much gross in every one. Freaky fun is what they're for. There's so much ugly, so much more. Gross for one, gross for all. We play with a mad ball. We play with a mad ball. We play with a mad ball. Mad ball. Mad ball. Freaky fun for everyone, sold separately from Amtoy. Mad ball. Hold still, and this won't hurt a bit. Well, maybe a bit. Actually, it'll hurt a lot. Need a lift? You did good work down there, soldier. Well, well. Those fleshies are proving more robust than I anticipated. Eh, no! That's my leg! Yeah, well, give me back my arm or I'll pound you with one of Bug Boys! <laughs> uh, 
I can finish here, Madden. Alert the others, we'll head for the new camp as soon as Gamma Team returns. If Gamma Team returns. Guardian, we're back. We don't have good news. The others? There's Gamma Team. What's left of it? A single soldier? We lost all but one? It's only a matter of time, Uncle, before we lose everyone. Uh, unless you can think of a way to defeat an enemy that's invincible. Hopping from safe camp to safe camp won't defeat Baron Dark. Grimskull, we can't give Guardian, up. Guardian, this man needs aid. No, I'm fine. All right, soldier? I'm no soldier. My name's Ferris. All right, Ferris. Get yourself another sky cycle from supply. Guardian, are the others ready to move out? On your signal, Lightstar. This way. How am I supposed to make heads or tails of this two-dimensional gobbledygook? Ah, where's my holoputer? Holoputers require energy. That ancient generator we dragged along on this little romp gave out hours ago. You call this light? I can barely see the bones in front of my face. Ah, dear Baron, I hate this swamp even more than you. That's why I'm proposing a way that may allow us to leave sooner. Doctor, the humans possess frightfully little imagination. Whatever brought them to this swamp in the first place will bring them back eventually. And in the meantime, I rust solid. Please, Baron, hear me out. With my latest device, we can seek out the humans, rather than sit here like bones on a log waiting for them to make their move. Continue. An air gas spectral analysis unit. <laughs> I've whipped up a few of them in my spare time. With it, we can pick up the vapor trails of sky cycles. But I can reach out to dear Prince Joshua at any time. In theory, you're the only one possessed with that particular skill, and then only with Grimskull. Oh, looky here! This little light is going blinky blink blink! I think this is the perfect test for your little device. No! It's not the bike. I can't do this anymore. Do what? Play the brave soldier. Fight the good fight! Well, I'm not a brave soldier. I'm not good. I'm sorry about the others. I'm Gamma Team and the rest of your squad... You don't get it, do you? Why do you think I was the only one left after those... those monsters surrounded us and kept coming? And coming! It doesn't matter. Yes, it does! I survived because I ran. I tried. I, 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 I mean, I, I think I tried, but they just kept coming. Do you really understand that? They just keep coming. You can't stop them. That's when I... Here. I hate those skeleton warriors! But I hate myself even more. Because now, I know what I am. You were scared. No! I was a coward. I'll let you know a little secret. After what I found out about myself out there, I realized something. I'm more like Baron Dark's boys than I am like you and the rest of the Legion's light. It's what's inside. Counts. Ferris, wait! No! If I'd known we'd have this much luck, I'd have brought reinforcements! You're welcome! It can't be! They found us! Ferris! Uh, uh, my 
my, 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 what have we here? A runaway! How promising. Really, Dagger, I thought you knew how to drive! You wanna walk is fine by me! Watch it, Missy! Friendly fire can be downright painful. Oopsie. You fool! Darkest soul, evil's courier, serve me as a skeleton warrior! Score another one for our team! Yeah! Ferris, no! No! We have to go. This way, quickly! <laughs> we'll be right back with more Saturday Morning Cartoon Max out after these messages. Sages. He's the king of the road, the master of sass, Rad Fink! Got an eight ball shifter. Woo! Got some flames on the door. Just live to pop we lid with my four by four. Better than a bunch of singing raisins. Rad Fink and the Rad Rods each sold separately. Ow! You're driving me wild! Eleven world-class contenders. Take them down with your controller, beat them all, and you've got a shot at Tyson's title. But for that, you've got to beat Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. Don't we know these guys? They're honorary turtles, and each of them is carrying the official Sewer Ford Sword. Not merely a fashion statement, the Sewer Sword represents the cutting edge of turtle technology, the ultimate in personal defense. Get the boy. Uh-oh, what's that up ahead? Could it be foot soldiers, Bebop, or even Shredder himself? Uh, no, it's only Dad. I knew we were being shadowed. He makes you From Playmate. you wish. I'm going back for Ferris. You can't. He won't listen to you now. You know that. <laughs> he's terrified of the skeleton warriors, and now he's one of them! No, oh, this is a nightmare. Justin! Help me go back for Ferris, please! If we could recapture him, then what? That young man's been skeletonized. He's no longer the Ferris any of us knew. And that's it, then? At least we know how they found us so easily. They traced the vapor trails from our sky cycles. I can't believe it! Ironic, isn't it? There at the bottom of the swamp sit the fusion converters we need for our sky cycles. With those converters in place, our cycles can't be traced. Baron Dark won't be able to track us. So, when do we leave? I can't bear to think what's happened to him. Don't. He doesn't. The moment he changed, he became a thing that doesn't care. You didn't. I didn't become a skeleton warrior. I just became a man who knows his own capacity for evil. Oh, Joshua, I'm sorry. Oh, don't pity me. I don't bear it well. I'm going after Ferris. Don't. It's impossible to help him. I can't believe that. I am going to bring him back if it takes the last Jennifer, breath I... Jennifer, no. I understand how you feel about Ferris, but I can't lose you. Understand that? <laughs> Here's to my newest warrior, Ferris! 
Mind if I borrow him for a dance, Baron? <laughs> Just don't hurt him too much. <laughs> you seem pleased with your new warrior. Talon seemed especially concerned over the fate of this fellow. Perhaps Ferris shall deliver the Lightstar Crystal right to our door. Or should I say, Lightstar's old door. All right, I'll take the north side. Madden, you and McLaren meet me there two minutes after my signal. We'll secure the cargo with the Magna Lifts, then rendezvous back here by the Sky Cycle hangar. Let's just hope the three of us can do what Gamma Team couldn't. Still can't find Talon? No. So, my stubborn niece has gone after Ferris. Lightstar will need your help with the converters when he gets back. You shouldn't have to deal with Baron Dark alone. Hmm. I do it all the time. At least Father isn't here to see what Baron Dark did to our old home. Ferris? Are you alright? I want you to come back with me. We'll do what we can to help you. Please? Come on, what do you say? I say... Gotcha! I'm here to help you! Ferris! <laughs> This? This is what I am now! You were a fool to come find me! What a proud day indeed. Her royal lowness has dropped by the old homestead for a brief visit. She's too pure of heart to serve me. We'll have to dispose of her. And when her sniveling siblings arrive? Then the crystal shall be mine. But the princess need not be with us in order to lure them in. Such lovely pale skin. Pity I can't relieve you of it. I just have one thing to say, Baron. Hmm, yes? Get some breath mints. Show your gift out! Permanently! I know you, Ferris. You can't really hurt me. Do it, Ferris, before I do it for you. I'll be back for you, I promise. Goodness, Talon, where are my manners? Please, won't someone help her up? Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. It's here. The revolutionary Neo Geo Pocket Color. With 16-bit power. Link to the Sega Dreamcast. Revolving joystick. 146 color display. Six cool styles. The graphics will blow you away. Neo Geo Pocket, way ahead of the game. It came from the third dimension with its own brain, its own voice, its own legs. There's only one problem. It needs your eyes. Virtual Boy. See it now in 3D. No! Stop them! Don't 
We were frantic. Uncle, I saved him! We can save them! We can save all of them! Saved who? How? Wh what are you talking about? Look, Uncle! Ferris is human again! My word! You returned him from the boneyard! Go on. Tell him how it happened. His heartstone was knocked loose in a scuffle and- How close to him were you? He was trying to crush her in his arms. I was? Uh... I can't remember. Ah! What just happened out there? Someone explain to me what just happened out there! If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, that... that Talon creature destroyed a skeleton warrior. Hmm. It's the Heartstone. It appears that without it, a warrior regresses to a weak, fleshy state. Ah! You mean my skeleton warriors are vulnerable? So it would appear. And you, most of all. Why am I most vulnerable? Isn't it obvious? If I were to be, well, refleshed, you could return me to my skeleton warrior state. Who would re-skeletonize you? As soon as the converters are in place, we need everyone to move out. Right. I'll map out routes to the next safe camp. Talon, you know Ferris has changed. Of course he's changed. We saved him from the warriors. Did we? Ferris may never be strong enough for battle ever again. He needs it more. Everyone in Lambda Group, mount up and prepare to head out on my signal. Guardian! Skeleton warriors in the cave are cut off! Move out, sir! You haven't got much time! Time enough, thanks to you. You... you faced the skeleton warriors. You saved us. I... I have to go now. Come back to us when you're ready. If those humans now possess a means of destroying my skeleton warriors, that I am left with but a single choice. I must destroy them, and quickly! Come, bad dog. Peace is such an abstract thing. Is it the comfort one takes in one's friends and family? or the respite one occasionally finds from one's own soul? Or does one achieve peace in the final silence of one's enemies before they make their peace with you?
Stay right there. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. Oh, energy. Sometimes I think I'm running out of energy. Seems like we use an awful lot for heating and lighting and driving, reading and writing and jiving. Energy, you'd think we'd be saving it up. Energy, you can get it by damming up a river. Energy, a windmill can make the breeze deliver. But even with milling and damming, our needs are so much more demanding for energy. We have to use some kind of fuel. Chop, chop, chop. The cavemen use wood to stop the fires. Chop, chop, chop. They made all the tools that they require. Chop, chop, chop. Inventions got more and more inspired. The fires got higher and higher, and clearings got wider and wider. Energy, they were burning about all their wood up. Then one day, men discovered that coal would do it better. Mine is dark, and it looked like it might just last forever. It seemed like the final solution. It started the Industrial Revolution. Energy, we could just keep on digging it up. Now, in 1859, way out in western Pennsylvania, a man had built a rig that got some laughs from folks who came in. But suddenly, a mighty roar came up from under the ground. Soon, a gush of gushing oil soaked all who stood around. Now, no one knew when that gush of blue, the petroleum years were honest, or that so many cars and trucks would come to cause a crisis. Energy, we're looking to try and find some new kinds. Energy, exploring to try and make a new find. Nuclear and thermal and solar, if we miss, we'll get colder and colder. Energy, we gotta stop using you up. So don't be cross when mama says turn that extra light out. Just turn it off till we find us a fuel that never runs out. If everyone tries a bit harder, fuel will go farther and farther. In a Jeep, we're gonna be stretching you out. Much has changed since the last Mortal Kombat tournament. Dark forces of Outworld have begun invading the Earth realm. These attacks are seriously weakening Earth's dimensional fabric, enabling not only Outworlders to enter the Earth realm, but warriors from other domains as well. Only the most extraordinary warriors could possibly meet this challenge. Liu Kang, Princess Kitana, Sub-Zero, Jax. Sonya Blade. Nightwolf. Kiva. Curtis Stryker. Driven by purpose and bound by honor, these are the defenders of the realm. Hey, I've got work to do. Combat alert! There's a new rip in Earth's dimensional fabric. Naval, this is Liu Kang. Do you read? 
Read and see. Satellite has you. What is it this time? Sensors are detecting cybers. That probably means Sector and Cyrex are behind this invasion. Let us know when you have a head count. Out. Mortal Kombat begins again. Sector and Cyrax were not dealing with mindless cybernetics. They better have brains because they show me ugly. Let's start toasting those freaks! Kitana? Liu Kang. You're all right. I was afraid fear is a far greater adversary than the one we are about to face. Cybers have entered so far. The dimensional portal is still open, so more could be on the way. Not on my watch. We have to keep the cybernetic units from reaching the city. Duh! No kidding, Striker. Up until now, we've kept civilians from learning about these outworld invasions. Straighten up, soldier. Hey, I'm not your soldier. Well, if those cyber cretins make it past us, everyone's ground meat. We need a strategic plan of attack. I got one! Combat time! <laughs> I must be a masochist to keep hanging with that girl. I can't believe Blade's going again. So what's new? Let's do it! for watching my back, Jax. Now watch your own! <clears throat> gotcha! Surrender, Princess Kitana. We are not only superior fighting redeemed, we have number you, go take to one. You have the numbers, Sector, but you lack the soul. You had your chance. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Prepare yourself for combat. Mortal Kombat action figures. Fight for right in your own tournament of champions. Liu Kang. Johnny Cage. Raiden. Get over here. Sub Zero. Reptile in the Dragon MK1. Kino on the combat cycle. Mortal Kombat. It's not just a game anymore. Mortal Kombat action figures. Combat cycle comes with Kano. Dragon MK1 comes with Reptile. All aboard! Wait for me! A porcupine! You're on my train! And with a popping suitcase! I'm Poppy, and those are my sugar corn pops. They're just popping with crunchy sweet taste. You can try them. Well, if it doesn't take too long. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pop Cereal. A popping good part of this nutritious breakfast. Mmm, delicious. Poppy, I wouldn't miss these for anything. Even for I train? Even for... <laughs> and honor. Good form, Liu Kang. We take out five of those ninja gizmos and ten more show up. <gasps> Sub-Zero! What's that, 
Freezoid doing here? Seems he's putting a big chill on the invasion. Let's back him up. Are you nuts? We can't trust Sub-Zero. He's a traitor to his own clan. Hey, I don't want to marry the guy, but he's given us the edge we need. I don't like this either, but we must eliminate the cybernetic units. Then what are we waiting for? Combat time! Stand back. I'm gonna seal the rip. That ought to zip lock those cyber saps out of this dimension. For the moment, at least. <laughs> this reunion could use an icebreaker. We were not sure if we would ever see you again, Sub-Zero. You disappeared so suddenly. Yeah, we were wondering which side you were fighting on these days. A well-placed jab, Sonya. It is true, I was once Lin Kuei and fought for the forces of darkness. But that was long ago, back when my brother was still alive. It has been many years now since Liu Kang faced my brother in mortal combat. To win, you must use the component which brings life. Oh, could I have beaten him without Kitana's secret? It is over. What? What? We are finished here. So? Why'd you turn on your clan anyway? Girl, your parents ever teach you the word tact? After his death, I realized that my own brother was innately evil, and without honor, I could no longer fight for what my clan believed in. That was when I decided to help you. Then why the disappearing act? In spite of what I knew, I was too filled with hate to go on. So I sought seclusion, to try and find inner peace. I guess what we're all wondering is, can you ever really forgive Liu Kang for icing your brother? What Liu Kang did, he did to save Earth. He fought with honor and great purpose. What I want to know is how you just happened to show up when you did. My return was no coincidence. This little confrontation with the Cybers was nothing compared to what's about to happen. Who sent you? No one. I've come to warn you that Scorpion is on his way from Outworld to invade Earth. You're certain Scorpion is coming? Yes. But there's no way to be sure where the dimensional rip will take place until it begins. You're not gonna believe him! How would he know anyway? Because... they tried to recruit me. <gasps> well, good timing, Raiden. The fighting's over, girlfriend. Don't start with me, Jax. I've been with the Elder Gods. We have another crisis. That's old news. Frosty here beat you to it. Oh, so you brought word of Scorpion's impending invasion. Interesting. Highly suspicious, you mean. Besides, who says it's true? I do. Huh. You may be the god of thunder and all, but you've been wrong plenty of times. You really do have a death wish. Uh, let's see if Nightwolf's detected a rip. Nothing definitive yet, but I'm getting negative ion readings in the dimensional fabric. Then kick your jets and jam. Hold it! We can't reveal the location of MK Headquarters to him! Hey, Sub-Zero's cool. Uh, sorry. He's a warrior of honor. Well, don't come whining to me if the Outworlders invade base. Hey, babe, I'll take the invasion over here. I told you so's any day. Striker. Come in, Luke King. What is it now, Striker? 
You know, backseat drivers are usually in the same vehicle. Funny. Now remember, keep your nose down on the turns, otherwise you'll flip your craft. Do you read me? Hey! Put on that blindfold now! Luke King, did you copy? Yeah, I heard ya. I still don't understand why I have to pilot this... this thing. I'd rather face a thousand ninjas than a single computer. Agreed. But we must all be experts at the Dragon Jets in case of an emergency. I just don't want to create the emergency. Hang on, Katana. Just a slight miscalculation. I'm totally in control. I hear you, Kiva. Wild animals have no business being pets! <laughs> With or without his cop's uniform, dogs still hate him. Everyone knows those creatures carry all sorts of diseases. What a hypochondriac! It's okay, boy. Sub-Zero is a friend. Stryker, on the other hand, I saw what you did. Thanks. Come on, Sub-Zero. We'll give you the 10 cent tour. What the hey? Long as he knows the way, might as well show him our secrets, too. Don't let her get to you. Sonya's okay. She's just... Sonya. It's a little more than that. Sonya lost her last two partners in battles with Outworlders. It wasn't her fault. But she still feels responsible somehow. She's hurting bad. We all deal with our pain a little differently. Any irregularities in the dimensional fabric? Trust me, we'll let you know. I believed you to be a shaman, a man with great mystical powers, not... A computer geek? Up until now, we've been able to drive all the invaders back to their own realms. But lately, the attacks have become more and more frequent. This constant stress is seriously weakening the dimensional fabric, making entering the Earth realm easier and easier. The rip's starting! No! We're under attack! Is it Scorpion? No. The Nomad. Question is, how did they find you? Do I have to draw you a map too? Sub-Zero betrayed us! Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. All the mature, responsible things you could be doing. Helping old ladies cross the street, proudly maintaining your yard, hanging with your folks, or cleaning your room. But get real. You'd rather be playing video games. You can rent them from Blockbuster. They've got more of the coolest new Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis games for rent than anyone in the world. So dudes, why not get your game from Blockbuster? It's the mature thing to do. We couldn't trust him. On my honor, I knew nothing of this. Honor? <laughs> yeah, right. Nightwolf and I will deal with Sub-Zero. The rest of you better hit the Dragon Jets and defend this joint.
<laughs> I don't recommend it. understand how the Nomad entered our realm undetected. It's a safe bet they slipped in with Cyrax's forces. The Nomad are the lowest life form in our world. Since when did you start hanging with Wastelanders? When they tried to recruit me to help Scorpion, they, they must have tagged me with some kind of tracking device. Mm -hmm. Can you and Kiva handle Sub-Zero? I need to prepare a portal to send the Nomad back. Do what you have to. We'll be okay. Side. It's Carbrack, their new leader. <coughs> oh, now what? Intruders inside. May need backup. <coughs> no can do. We have all we can handle out here. You cannot fight the Nomad alone. Let me help you, Nightwolf. <sighs> Finish them. Kiva! Now! Finish you. Interior is secure. Thanks. Exterior too. But now that these Nomad know their way here, I've got to ship them to a realm of no return. Okay, where's that two-faced fridge? Easy, Sonia. He just risked his neck to help us. There's no doubt left. Sub-Zero's one of us. about being tagged, they tracked you with this. Let's see if there are any signs of Scorpion. Now what? Now comes the hard part. Eating crow. Look, I I'm sorry I gave you such a tough time. It's just hard for me to trust anymore. I, I can't stand seeing people I care about getting hurt. I understand. Yeah, well, thanks. <sighs> for everything. Combat alert! Big time! Scorpion. Mortal Kombat continues.
stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Farthest edge of the galaxy, where life as we know it is non-existent except on a few man-made space stations. Here in this cold, lonely part of space, it seems as though almost anything can happen, even the supernatural. Jace, can you spare a minute? Uh, I'm just filling these computer logs. At least I thought I was. Boy up! <laughs> Boy up, no! <laughs> Looks like Cliff made a monkey out of you, Jace. <laughs> <laughs> a distress signal coming from the Outworld station. Can you pick up any voices? No, it's an automatic SOS. And that's strange. It stopped. That station isn't that far from here. We'd better check it out. Space Ghost! Prepare for auto docking. Something's wrong, Space Ghost. The station's docking bay isn't responding. Looks like I'll have to be a gate crasher. <laughs> Space Ghost, what's going on? I think the wolves are at the door, Jan. Dock the Phantom Cruiser and follow me in the shuttlecraft. The shuttlecraft? Why, Space Ghost? Because something very strange is going on around here. <laughs> Somebody needs a lesson in remedial howling. So, it appears we have guests. We'll have to do something about that. Get out! Get out! If you value your lives, get out! Is this a space station or a fun house? This looks like the command center. Hi, guys. Sorry I don't have time to play just now. This place gives me the creeps. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're scared of the dark. A ghost! Turn back. Turn back while you can. Now look who's being a fraidy cat. <laughs> okay, okay, take it easy. They can't do anything to us in here. It's not anything to be frightened of. Right, Lip? <laughs> Showing them, Blip. What do you say we step on it? Coming up on you, Space Ghost. Space Ghost? What's going on? I don't know. Until an hour ago, this was just a normal space station, minding its own business. These zombies are trying to stop us. They're being controlled. And whoever is doing it is afraid of us. Afraid, am I? They'll soon learn. What worries me is the fact that there's an entire mothball fleet housed here at Outworld Station. Uh-oh, more party crashers. Jan, Chase, hit the shuttlecraft lights. The light! It scared them off! That's it. I've got it. Have you ever heard of a Borvolaka? It's an alien creature like a vampire, only it drains away its victims' vital energies. They become zombies, and then they become Borvolakas themselves. You mean we're up against some kind of interstellar Dracula? And I know exactly where he is. Come out here and send the shuttle back to the cruiser on autopilot. So, he's heading this way. I suppose it's time I met this fellow face to face. What? It seems I've underestimated this space ghost a trifle. Please, no false modesty. You! No! I know your plan, Vorvalaka. You're turning the people here into soul vampires and taking off in that mothball fleet to find more stations and more worlds and more victims. Yes! Creating a master race of Borvalakas, feeding on the souls of fools like you. There's just one hitch. How will you do it without the spaceships? What? While we've been chatting, my young friends are sabotaging that mothball fleet. Hurry, my children. Invaders are in the hangar. Stop them. Attack! Attack! Jan, Jace, how's it coming? 
We just finished, Space Ghost. Everything going to plan? You'd better believe it. In a few moments, every zombie in town's going to be down there. Over here! Come and get us! This way! <laughs> Time for Inviso Power! Here I am, space fans! Now to deal with Mr. Big himself. Very well, Space Ghost. But I will still have revenge. How, oh, with all your weird friends locked up? Because I made the station's cooling system power core fail. It will quickly overheat and the whole station will explode. Your Phantom Cruiser is trapped in the hangar. So I shall escape to take over another station without your interference. It worked! He's taking off! But we've got big troubles. This station's going to blow in about one minute. What? Well, what happened? With Vorvalaka gone, his influence must be wearing off. Get them into the cruiser. I'll try to free the ship. All aboard, Space Coast. I'm almost done. If I can just get these loose without damaging the ship. If he doesn't finish up in a few seconds, we're done for! Now that's what I call a close shave! Nonsense. I got us out of there with easily four seconds to spare. Now it's the Vorvalaka's turn for a surprise. The controls! They're not responding! I'm heading out of the galaxy! No! He'll just drift along back to his home galaxy, where he'll never harm anyone again. Where he'll never scare anyone again. Come now, Jan. You know there's no such things as ghosts. <laughs> In the far reaches of space, there is no such thing as the supernatural. Only strange and otherworldly life forms waiting to be encountered for the first time. And when some of those life forms turn out to be evil, the galaxy is thankful that Space Ghost is on the job. Colonel William Guile, one of the greatest martial artists in the world, travels the global tournament circuit, using it to conceal his top secret mission as leader of an elite group of international crime fighters known only by their code name, Street Fighter. The heroic man beast, Blanca. Kicking fighting machine, Chun Li. And the team of the most amazing warriors ever seen have joined forces with Guile to combat the criminal empire of Shadaloo and its superhuman leader, Bison. They have their own code of honor discipline, justice, commitment. And together, they will triumph against the forces of evil. Street Fighter! I used to be. Pincer Grip! Trier! Deserter! <laughs> Why'd you have to go and do that? said when you were in Shadowloo with the International Peacekeeping Forces, you ran out on your own troops! Yeah! Sonic Boom! Don't believe everything you hear. You 
wanted me, sir? I hear you weren't very popular down at that club, Colonel. How are you holding up? Well, playing a lowlife isn't my idea of a good time. We both know your deep cover story is vital to the entire Street Fighter operation. The world needs us again. It's a little more complicated than your usual assignment. No high-tech bombs to defuse, no terrorist army to stop. This time your enemy is a virus. I hate colds. I uh, take it this is worse. It'll take you out in a day. It could wipe out the planet in a week. Special operations sent in a team of doctors to contain it, but they're missing. Sick? Kidnapped. We need you to assemble a street fighter team. Find the medics, find out who took them, and why. Yeah, and not get the sniffles doing it. Right. Guile, the public can't know about this. It must be a street fighter operation. At whatever cost to you and your team, the virus must not be allowed to spread. So what do I do when I find this virus? Give it plenty of liquids and put it to bed? That's up to the medical team. This is our last contact with them. A phone relay to our security base in San Paulo about eight hours ago. I think you'll have some personal interest. We are under attack! Repeat, we are... We'll issue you whatever firepower you want. You know I hate guns. Guns are for wimps. All right. But the clock's ticking, Guile. No time to assemble the full team. Well, let's see what other operatives we have in the area. Chun Li. Good. Though there are a couple of freelancers in the area. Not them. Good luck, Colonel. With Ken and Ryu? Thanks. I'm gonna need it. Diamonds! Rubies! Oh man, the temple of lost treasure awaits! It wouldn't be waiting if some bonehead hadn't lost the map. Well, lucky for you, I've got a photographic memory. Yeah, that temple's right over... over there, someplace. That's what you said two days ago. <laughs> Ryu? Are you... are you okay? <laughs> oh, man! I've been slimed by Arnold the Pig! Okay, that's it! I'm out of here! But what about all that treasure? Cars, boats, babes! Come on, man, just one more day. We don't find that temple today, we head home. One day, sundown, temple or no temple. <coughs> dos, uh, dos cruzieros, por, por... Colonel Guile. What are you doing here? Meeting a friend. Uh, 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 these are from my team. Uh, you, uh, need some more players? <sighs> I'm gonna regret this. It's okay. I'll handle the rest myself. Give us your money! I didn't hear the magic word. Good morning, Chun-Li. What took you so long? I had a little trouble with my bags. Not much to go on, Colonel. No trails out of here that I can see. Well, keep looking. So, when do we ditch for the temple? Discipline, justice, commitment. You forget the Street Fighter Code of Honor? We have done the code already. For an hour. Cross your fingers. I found a surveillance unit that didn't melt. This is Dr. Devilla, Operation Amber. This is a mayday. We have a mayday. We are under attack. Repeat, we are... Hear that? Sounds like high-frequency maze arrays. Whoever captured the medics wanted them to function, but they'll have hefty headaches when they come to. <laughs> you know her? A little personal history? A lot in my old life. Sorry, Guile. I didn't know. Hey, you weren't supposed to. Come on. She must be something special. Those scrapes on the branches indicate military hovercraft. More than one. Where'd they get them? Village rent-a-tank? This wasn't done by locals. 
It's Bison. The man who killed my father. Father's spirit will never rest until Bison pays for his crimes. Welcome! So good of you to accept my invitation. I am Bison, and I am most curious about your work. What do you know about our work? I know your Operation Amber has been looking for a cure for a virus so deadly that it could wipe out every living human were it to escape this dark place. Then why did you disrupt our work? Because you weren't working fast enough. This virus simply hadn't infected enough people for you to study. Oh yes, a few boars, a few monkeys, but you just didn't have the tools you need to succeed. Tools? People! You need a pool of people to examine, to work on. This virus is terminal! We're close, but we still don't have a cure. Infecting innocent people is not going to change that. Oh, but I think it will. Necessity is the mother of invention and all that. In 12 hours at sunrise, the hatch will open. The balloon containing the virus will explode. Its contents will coat everything in the room. You may escort our latest guests into their new accommodations now. Your friends, receiving direct physical contact with the viral agents, will become infected and... No! Stop it! It's up to you to save them, and when you've succeeded, let me know. Looks like there was some kind of struggle, but whoever was here is gone. Guile! <laughs> what have you done with them? Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. Uh, yeah, like two Timmy tacos and a couple don't of even mini. Don't think about it, pal. Uh, okay. Uh, if you don't. You're have... not getting anything from me, Mister. Could I speak to your manager, please? Listen, cheapy, cheap, cheapy. Hit the road, or it's gonna get ugly. Kiss your toadstool goodbye, loser. <laughs> With games like Super Mario Bros. now in color, you might actually forget where you are. Oh, who goes there? Game Boy Color. Get into it. Hey, dead furniture. What's wrong? They left without breakfast again. What are you serving? Beans. What else? How about fruit flavors? Fruit? That's different. Come follow my nose. Got a nose big as Texas. It's always nose. Whoa, here on Fruit Loop cereal. With natural orange, lemon, and cherry flavors, and a full day supply of vitamin C. Part of this complete breakfast. Well, little birdie, I'm making Fruit Loops my brand. <laughs> Say you want to be a street fighter. You're no street fighter. Not until you've mastered the six world warriors of the Street Fighter 2 handheld game. Hundred hand slaps and rolling attacks, fireballs and hurricane kicks are your weapons. Beat three in a row. Sangi, Honda, Manga. Come back, then we'll talk. Street Fighter 2 handheld game. Okay, Jungle Boy, let's... Anka? Kyle, what are you doing here? And what have you done with my brothers? Your brothers? Anka? Aren't you supposed to be dead or something? Anka, it's just that we're all surprised to see you. After Bison turned me into this... this thing... So no one would ever have to look at me again. I can't be with people. I get angry. Then who are these brothers you were talking about? The Incan 
mystics of the temple. I lived like an animal of the rainforest until they found me and healed me. Did he say temple? They have lived here for a thousand years, peaceful, wise. They had left for meditations when I heard them, and now they're gone. And you're here. Where are they? I don't know, Blanca, but I think I know who took them. It's Bison. But he can't be alive. It's impossible. Come with us, Blanca. We'll fight Bison together. It'll be like old times. I'll fight with you, Kyle. This one time until my brothers are safe. Well, Doctor, how goes the good fight? Get away from me, Bison. Every second you distract me cuts the chances for saving these people. <laughs> I take it then that you're closing in on a vaccine for my volunteers. We're close to a treatment. Now go away! Ken? Ryu? What is it? Ken and Ryu are gone. <laughs> they lasted longer than I thought. Come on. Then why'd you bother bringing them on this mission in the first place? Because they could be the best. If they quit flaking off for a minute and concentrate. Discipline, justice, commitment. Ken thinks it just means less time to party. Besides, I thought you liked them. So, now do you believe me? I'm, uh, still not sure we should be here. Oh, come to Papa. It's not right, Ken. Uh, these things don't belong to us. What about our code, huh? Wake up and smell the silver polish, man! If Bison's got Blanca's brothers, they won't be needing this stuff anymore. Am I right? Ken, we don't... Ryu! Are a no no. No! I hate when that happens. Sonic Boom! What's going on out there? Come! You may prove useful yet. Cavalry's here! Everybody out! No sign of our guests yet. What are you doing? Terminating the experiment. Is that you? I was sick to think I'd lost you at Shadaloo. Your ingratitude leaves me no choice. Your friends had over 11 hours left to live. My, how time flies. The virus! <laughs> Quickly, get out of here! No! Cindy? Cindy, are you all right? William? Why are you here? Do you work for this bison creature? Whatever you may think of me, Cindy, I haven't fallen that low. The old William Guile never would have. But since the court-martial, I feel like I don't know you anymore. Why are you here? I can't tell you. I want to, but I can't. We used to trust each other, William. I used to think I meant something to you. You still do. Blanca! 
careful. He's been exposed. I don't know if I can help him. Bison! He who fights and runs away is a cowardly scum. Guile! Normally, I wouldn't miss a chance to fight you, Colonel. Magnetic pulse! But something in the night air soon won't agree with me. William, no! Meddling fool! Happy landing! What's wrong? Scam didn't pan out? Colonel! I mean, Guile. Ryu reminded me what our Street Fighter code really stands for. Help him, please. He's real sick. I'm sorry. We can make him comfortable, but that's about all. Oh, come on, man! You doctors have a pill for everything! Dr. Davila, come quickly, it's Blanca! Probably time to say our goodbyes. I'm sorry, William. I'm... I'm thirsty. Should he be thirsty? <sighs> he shouldn't be alive. I don't believe it. This is it. Whatever Bison did to Blanca to transform him into this has altered his immune system. He's producing antibodies that are fighting the virus. Don't you understand? His blood can cure anyone who gets sick from this. Like Ryu. It can be the basis for a vaccine. The Street Fighters need you, friend. I need you. We work in secret. No glory, but no interference. Discipline, justice, commitment. We make a difference. Think about it. You realize you're asking him to leave his life here, where he's found peace. You can't know what that will cost him, giving up the one thing he loves most in this life. Some idea. Hey, Street Fighter! I want to thank you, Blanca. We want to thank you, all of you, for what you did for Ryu here. Oh, now I'm stuck with this Joker. Are you sure you don't want to hang out? I hear Tierra Del Fuego's got some killer waves. Waves? Wait a minute. You said there was work. Kyle. Yeah, pal. For ten years, I got into nothing but trouble hanging around with you. Any sane person would stay a thousand miles away. Count me in. All right! Now, about that 30 bucks you owe me for Mindanao. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute! Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way.
things, music lovers. <laughs> First, we will hear a waltz, written by Johann Strauss. <laughs> and as we hear the rhythmic strains of the haunting we flain, listen to the whipwing rhythm of the woodwinds as it rolls a wound and a wound, and it comes out here. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? And now we will present the beautiful Boo Danube. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome to Video Land. Mega High! Wake up, Kid Icarus! Welcome to Castle <laughs> Behold, the ultimate warp zone. Kevin, I thought I told you to clean up your room. On the dark and dangerous world of Metroid, the evil mother brain is about to discover a sinister secret. Power! I must have more power! Uh, here, mother brain, uh, take my flashlight batteries. Not that kind of power, you withering weakling! Whoa! I want the power to reach my destiny! The power to rule video land! But most important of all, the power to destroy the princess and that madly captain in. Metroid mirror on my wall, tell me how to crush them once and for all. Hidden within Mount Icarus's towering peak, the three sacred treasures contain the power you seek. For 10,000 years, they've been sight unseen. But bring the treasures together and you'll soon be queen. Yes, Queen Mother Brain, Supreme Dictator of Video Land. What a wonderful boss. Give me the princess. Yes, Mother Brain. Meanwhile, at the Palace of Power. Kevin, hurry! Uh, don't worry, princess. I'll be right there in a flash. Wow! A life-size Donkey Kong simulator! What a concept! I hope I'm not interrupting anything. If you've called to threaten us again, it won't work, Mother Brain. You're absolutely right, my dear. Threatening hasn't worked. And I apologize for my rude behavior. All of this fighting gets us nowhere. What do you say we settle our differences in a more sportsmanlike way? I don't trust her. She's up to something. What do you suggest, Mother Brain? A challenge. We'll hold a video Olympics on Mount Icarus. My warriors, uh, uh, athletes, against what? Captain Inn and his end team. If we lose, we'll never set foot off Metroid again. If we win, I'll be the new princess of Video Land. You, princess? <laughs> we've got to give her the benefit of the doubt. Woo. But this is what we've been waiting for, your Heineckus. A chance for peace. I know, but Mother Brain can't be trusted. What if it's a trick? Well, if it is, what better way to find out than to go along with it? What if we lose? Lose? With me on our team? Don't be ridiculous. With Captain Ann leading us, we'll have the mega power to win. What do you say, your highness? Well, I guess... You're on, Mother Brain. Wonderful! We'll see you at Mount Icarus Coliseum tomorrow for the games. And for your funerals, fools! <laughs> I hope we've made the right decision. Don't worry, Princess. With a little workout, we'll be unbeatable. A short while later in the palace courtyard, Kevin and the others go into training to prepare themselves for the upcoming games. All right, guys. We've got to get into prime shape if we're going to win. Simon Belmont is always in prime shape. I can out jump rope you with my eyes closed. <laughs> hey, stop! Take it easy, you stupid whip! Cut it out! Whoa! I'm not too sure about you, Simon, but your whip's in great shape. <laughs> Very funny. What am I supposed to do with these balls, Captain Ann? It's simple, Mega Man. You just place it like this and throw it as far as you can. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like that. 
Go ahead, you try it. Hey! That was incredible! I know you want to help, Duke, but dogs aren't allowed to compete. Are they? You can count on me to win the archery event, Princessicus. No! What, may I ask, were you aiming at? The target. Does this look like a target to you? Oh! Here, let me show you how to hit the bullseye. Whoa! <laughs> Why, you big ape? <laughs> Halfway across video land at the strange world of Punch Out. Mother Brain's minions are also getting ready for the games. One potato, two potatoes, three potato, four. After I skip some rope, I eat one potato more. Ah, delicious. I love punching the punching bag. But I love biting them even better. <laughs> All right, King Hippo. Let's see if you can live this uh, much hate. <laughs> no sweat. Hey, Mother Bray! How'd you like the way I cleaned the dirt this way? I'll clean your face, dirt, if you don't stop fooling around. Oh, but we're practicing for the games, just like you told us to. I didn't expect you to practice sports. I expected you to practice cheating, you hippo pot bush head. Well, well, why do we need to cheat if you're just going to destroy them with the power of the three sacred treasures? Because, you cauliflower brain. Winning the games will improve my image as Princess of Video Land. Well, if it's cheating she wants, it's cheating she'll get. Like my famous wrecking ball punch. <laughs> yeah, and my broccoli bazooka. Why you? No, wait, it was an accident. I'll give you an accident on purpose. Defend yourself! Okay, you asked for it. I'll squash you. No! And I'll beat you. Huh? And I'll get you in an artist chokehold. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm gonna give you the old flying hippo and clap jam slam. Meanwhile, back at the Palace of Power, the princess grows fearful of losing Mother Brain's challenge. I'm the most handsome, so after we win the games, my face goes on the cereal box. Hey! I should be on the box, because I'm the strongest. The games are being held on my world, so I should be on the box, because... You no! Always You're always hogging the stuff, I wouldn't be on the... Stop it! None of you are going to be in a box if we don't win the games tomorrow. Don't worry, Princess. I know how to get these guys in shape. All right, 100 push-ups. Let's move it.
The next day on Mount Icarus, thousands have gathered to watch as their fate is decided in the Video Olympics. Now don't forget to keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Right! right. Now remember, it's not whether you win or lose. But how you play the game? No, you idiots! No! I've arranged for the events to take us to the three locations where the sacred treasures are buried. And once I possess their sacred powers, I'll destroy Captain N and the princess. Then Video Land will be mine! <laughs> After these messages, we'll be right back. I've heard kids talking about Konami video games from the Nintendo Entertainment System like they were real. Come on. I mean, the action in Konami's Russian attack is awesome. And those dudes in Castlevania are pretty intense. And I'll even admit that the sound in Konami games is jamming. But realistic? Give me a break. Konami video games so real, they'll blow you away. stop playing because you get old but you could get old if you stop playing game boy from nintendo where do you think really chocolatey chocolate milk comes from a chocolate cow in a chocolate field on a chocolate farm near a chocolate stream Wrong. Hmm? Really chocolatey chocolate milk comes from where you'd expect it to come from. Hershey. The chocolate people. The uh, chocolate milk people, too. Ladies and gentlemen of Video Land, let the games begin! You can do it, Kevin. I know you can. The first event, Greco Tag Team. I'm too small to wrestle. If King Hippicus sits on me, I'll be Squashicus Maximus. They picked their names out of a hat, Kid Icarus. We'll just have to do the best we can. Just a moment. There's been a mistake in the draw. King Hippo's out of the match. Wrestling for King Hippo will be... Donkey Kong! <laughs> First pitted opponent to the mat is the winner. No holds barred. You take care of Eggplant Wizard. I'll handle Donkey Kong. Yeah, sure I will. Come on, Kid Icarus. Make your move. <laughs> what a shrimp. And every shrimp needs a shrimp salad. Oops, almost forgot the breadstick. Kid Icarus. You gotta use leverage. <laughs> One, two, uh, Donkey Kong has been tagged! Let me go, Akus! One, two! Okay, you big ape, pick on someone your own size.
three sacred treasures, Mother Brain? We're gonna pulverize those pipsqueaks. I'm sure we are. But that's no reason I shouldn't have the greatest source of power in Video Land. Go get me the first sacred treasure. That's not fair. Donkey Kong weighs more than you. Are you kidding? He weighs more than the Chicago Bears. In the next event, Mega Man and Dr. Wily will compete in a 400-yard dash. Go, Mega Man! You can do it! Dr. Wily is falling behind as Mega Man approaches the finish line. Mega Man! He's disintegrated! And Dr. Wily wins the electric maze dash. It's two to nothing for Mother Brain's team. Get this guy off me before I have you frozen in butter sauce! Uh, so sorry, Mother Brain. Sorry, Your Highness. I tried. It's not your fault, Mega Man. They cheat. Meanwhile, in a sunken chamber beneath the surface of Mount Icarus, King Hippo searches for the first sacred treasure. Ugh, flying rats! Super Mario Brothers. Arcade hits like Kung Fu. Nintendo has the most video game hits. Hogan's Alley, Duck Hunt, and more like Baseball and Excite Fight. And you can play them only on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. Back at the towering Mount Icarus, the Video Olympics Coliseum arrives at the location of the next event. There's something familiar about the places these games are being held. Dives will be judged on a combination of their grace and difficulty. Uh, not to mention steering clear of the flying sharks. Flying sharks? 
You never said anything about flying sharks. Uh, I didn't want to worry you. <laughs> nice dive, Duke. Hey! Oh, no fair. Dogs don't count. Yeah, but hippos do, huh? That's enough. We'll settle this with a dive. Lover before beauty. Hmm. Wow. King Hippo is dropping like a bomb, but he'll get a low score if he doesn't put some more bite into it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Princess, you can beat him. Princess Lana wins the high dive. It's Mother Rain's team two, the end team one. Hooray! Wonderful, splendid! Hooray! Hooray! Wonderful, splendid! Hooray! Yahoo! Wahoo! Not bad. Not bad. I could have done better, and I don't even have a button. As the final event approaches, the score is tied. The fate of Videoland will be decided by the outcome of the 10-kilometer rocket chariot race. Maybe she's after a special warp zone. Uh, could be a secret password. Ah, uh, this is driving me crazy. I'm certain I've played something like this before, but I can't remember what. Forget about that. Just remember, we've got to win, or those creeps are going to be living in our palace.
the third one! Three? That's it. What's it? What Mother Brain is after. The three sacred treasures. Uh, you're too right, uh, Captain Ian. Uh, but unfortunately, you're also too late. My power is unstoppable now! Behold! The warp zone to Obsidia! Has Mother Brain really conquered Video Land? <laughs> Will Captain N and the others survive the deadly warp zone? Find out in the next chilling adventure of Captain N, the Game Master. Kevin, I thought I told you to clean up your room. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Flip that switch and what do you get? Number four, electricity, electricity. When you're in the dark and you want to see, you need a... Electricity, electricity. Flip that switch and what do you get? You get a... Electricity, electricity. Every room can now be lit with just a... Electricity, electricity. Where do you think it all comes from, this powerful... Electricity, electricity. Through high wires to here it comes, they're bringing a... Electricity, electricity. Every building must be wired to use it to Electricity, electricity Power plants most all use fire to make it to Electricity, electricity Burning fuel and using steam they generate Electricity, electricity Turn that generator by any means you're making a Electricity, electricity. A generator is a machine that contains a powerful magnet that creates a magnetic field. When wires are rotated rapidly through this field, then a current of electricity is produced. Now, if we only had a superhero who could stand here and turn the generator real fast, then we wouldn't need to burn so much fuel <laughs> to make electricity. Benjamin Franklin flying his kite was searching for electricity. That it had something to do with the light in its hole of Electricity, electricity Rubbing a comb with wool or fur Will give you a charge of static Electricity Stroking a cat to make it purr You're building up static Electricity, electricity Electricity at rest is called static electricity. Like in the winter, wearing a heavy coat, you get a shock off the doorknob, or you scrape across the carpet and sneak up on your very best friend and sap him on the ear with a shock of electricity. Current flowing to and fro makes a circuit of electricity, electricity. Voltage is the pressure that makes it go with pushing up electricity. Watts will tell you just how much you'll be using a Electricity, electricity Powerful stuff, so watch that plug, it's potent Electricity, electricity Electricity, electricity, electricity.
We got a lot of stuff to cover today, guys. There's a review of Game Boy's Double Dragon, a preview of Battle Tank for NES, the power team, a whole bunch of game tips, so let's get right to it. Let's start with a video power review. Today, we'll put the spotlight on Double Dragon. Sound like a familiar title? Well, this is a totally new version of Double Dragon for Game Boy. You'll recognize a lot of the characters, like the star, Billy Lee, his girlfriend, Marion, the no-good evil shadow boss, and those nasty buttheads, the Black Warriors. The object is to work your way from the inner city wasteland all the way out to the woods where the shadow boss has his headquarters. That's where you'll have to take on the boss man himself. A big difference between the NES Double Dragon and this version is that on Game Boy, you start out with full power. That way, you can use all nine different attack modes right from the start. Punches, kicks, uppercuts, over-the-shoulder throws. You'll get a workout before you even start to get to the Shadow Boss. Double Dragon even lets you use the Game Link to hook up with a friend or enemy and go eyeball to eyeball in a fight. The sound effects and music are pretty cool. They make the game more exciting to play. I like the graphics. They're really interesting to look at. Graphics? But the whole game's wall-to-wall -wall music and sound. But the graphics really make the game come alive. The music! Graphics! Music! Graphics! Music! 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 Ah! Preview to preview. Coming soon is Battle Tank. The first tank game for your NES that puts you right inside the tank. You actually get complete control over your tank's movements, so it feels like you're actually jamming with a real tank. Battle Tank throws lots of different obstacles in your way. Check it out! Let's go on to the power team. Then we'll come back and check out Ghouls and Ghosts, Super C, and Mega Man 2 in the Video Power Edge. But first, let's see how Big and his boys try to rip off a charity monster truck contest in an episode called Speedway Assault. Let's hit it. Video Power will be right back. Who knows baseball and football? And baseball and football. Either way you look at it, it's a winner. No one knows football and baseball better than Bo Jackson, and no one knows LCD video games better than Tiger. And now back to the power team. Let's go, people! We're making a movie here! Let's move it, move it, move it! Charlie, get our big shot star out here and let us start earning her money! I can't believe they're making a movie here in Millburg! It's so exciting! What are you talking exciting? A couple actors stand around in front of the camera making faces for 10, 20 seconds. Cut! They take a break for two hours. Yeah, well, I sure wish I had a job like that. Right, like somebody would be so stupid as to hire you. Uh, you hired me, boss. We're ready for you on the set, Miss Tish. Peace. Tish, baby, sweetheart, mega, mega superstar. I was the greatest actress in the history of Hollywood. Frankly, darling, I can't wait to get out of this hick town and back to Hollywood. Just hang in there. Another couple of days, and Milberg will be just a bad memory. Yes, like your last picture. <laughs> my, my last picture? That's great! Did you hear that? Is this kid a riot or what? <laughs> this guy needs his own zip code. Movie people are all weird. But the real nut is the guy who gave him the money to make the film. Hmm. 
FBI ought to get into this directing racket. Well, before you try it in Millburg, you better check out who's here. Well, well. I just might get to shoot a scene after all. Let's get out of sight. What are all these people doing here? You mean you don't know? Quiet, Quiet, under that, Quiet, Quiet everyone. everyone! Who's that man with the... Quiet on the set, please. Tish, baby, in this scene, a part of the building above you gives way and falls down, narrowly missing you. It had better miss me. Not to worry. The bricks are only foam rubber. All right, everyone. We're going to shoot the scene. And... Action! I don't understand what... Quiet! But I... What? Who? Uh, oh, Claude. Oh, lunatic! Do you know what it took to set up that scene? You gotta forgive him for zapping your scene. He didn't know you were making a movie. He didn't know we were making a movie. Is this a movie camera? Is this a movie light? Is this the director's chair? All right, all right, all right. But he doesn't know any of that stuff. Where does he live? In a cave? I used to live in a cave, as a matter of fact. Who are these people? Get them out of here! Be happy to oblige. <laughs> I know this is for real. I got a present for you, Tyrone. And I got one for you, pumpkin head. My trailer! You destroyed my trailer, you brute! Ow! Ow! Easy, lady! Fantastic action scene! They've got our game packs with them. This is our chance to get them back. Something. Wait till I zap you. You're not zapping anyone anywhere. The game pack. Got it, boss. Let's continue this game later. I'm with you. I almost broke that lady's foot with my leg. You video game hot shots ain't hurt the last on Mr. Big. Ruin my scene, will you? Trash my trailer, will you? Mess up my makeup, will you? I'll show you! It's time for us to hyperdrive out of here. 
No argument. Power up, big guy. Greatest scene I've ever filmed! The greatest scene you've ever filmed! Darling, I'm going back to what's left of my trailer. Have a good cry. Charlie! Tear this town apart brick by brick if you have to, but find that short fat guy with a cigar. I gotta have him for this movie! The Power Team will be right back after these messages. Tiger puts arcade action in the palm of your hand. Games like Mega Man 2. Fight your way through eight stages of play as you attempt to defeat the villainous Dr. Wily, his evil dragon, and his six deadly robots to win. Also available, Afterburner, Shinobi, Altered Beast, and Super Sprint. Tiger LCD Video Games. Video excitement in the palm of your hand. And now, back to the power team. Charlie, we've got to find that short fat guy. He's perfect for my film. We blew it. Not only did we mess up a chance to zap the power team, we ruined any chance I might have had to get next to that director fella. wants to talk to me? Is he stupid or what? Pull over, Joe. Hey, sorry about yesterday. I didn't mean to ruin your movie there. Forget about yesterday. I'm talking today, tomorrow, the future. Fella, I'm gonna make you a star. Not only does this guy need his own zip code, he needs his own planet. What are you talking about? I want to use you in my movie. That scene you did was fantastic. Get out of here. I mean it. Come on. Everyone wants to be in the movies. Wait a sec, boss. He's right. Everyone does want to be in the movies. So? So, we pulled the same routine on Max Force. Tell him he was great and they want to use him in the movie. Once he's in front of the camera, we zap him. He ain't gonna believe they want to use him in a movie. He would if he heard it from the director, and the director was you. What kind of nonsense is that? You've been hanging around Joe too long. He's starting to rub off on you. Look at that guy. He's about your height, fat like you. I mean, big, big. Yeah, I could pass for him. Come on in. We'll talk about it. Wonderful. You won't be sorry. It was an honest mistake, Max Force. I'm sure the director will accept your apology. Oh, man! <laughs> I can't believe you thought it was for real! Joe, take these jokers up the Big Moose Mountain and let them go. Then get back here and wait for us. They ought to make it back to town by tomorrow night. By then, we'll have zapped Max Force. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's go, Spike. We got a movie to make. It's not fair. I always miss out on the good stuff. We'll have it all on film. We'll show it like a whole movie back at the garage. Can we make popcorn? Now take him up to the mountain. You got Max Force's game pack? Good. I'm gonna 
get Max Force into a movie scene where he'll be trapped. When the time's right, you zap him with the game cartridge. I'm Monty, the director, and you're the cameraman. So, you're the cameraman, see? All we gotta do now is hope Max Force shows up to watch. Oh, Mr. Shumway, I have to talk to you. Some days, everything just goes your way, you know? I just wanted to say I'm sorry about yesterday. I never meant to... No problem! I saw the film of that scene. You've done so good, I want to use you today. Use me? In the movie? You're gonna be a star, man! And I want Zalia to stay around to watch the big scene. I guarantee you won't forget it. <laughs> All right. In this scene, you're the bad guy. The cops come up and handcuff you to the parking meter. Why? Because you're trying to put a penny in a dime meter. Remember, once you've got him handcuffed to the parking meter, all you gotta do is zap him with the game pack. Right, boss. And all of you, shut up or I'll zap ya! I'll zap ya? That has got to be Mr. Big! Quirk, get back to Bigfoot. Tell Johnny what's happening. And... Action! I want to check the lady with my cameraman here. I think we need a new director on this movie. Johnny Arcade! The one and only. Zap him, Spike! You guys are pretty tough against someone who's handcuffed. Let's make this a fair fight. Bigfoot, throw our lasers! Thanks, Johnny. No charge. Uh, uh, hi, how's it going? <laughs> Joe, shut up. Easy, dude. Max Force is doing fine. He's the star. Let him perform. Game over, Max Force. You're right, Mr. Big. The game is over. This time, I'm gonna take you apart! I've had it with movie people. I'll take real gangsters any day. Well, I guess you're not headed for Hollywood after all. I'm more than satisfied with my present precinct location. You'll always have a starring role with the power team next, Force. Right, 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 right. And there's always action! Video Power will be right back. Tiger puts arcade action in the palm of your hand. Games like Paperboy. Steer your bike through a seven-day paper route in the jungles of suburbia. Pick up and throw newspapers, avoid obstacles, and add subscribers while breaking scoring records and windows. Also available... Ninja Gaiden, Mega Man 2, Double Dragon 2, and Super Sprint. Tiger LCD Video Games. Video excitement in the palm of your hand. And now, back to Video Power. Way to go, Power Team. Are those guys some kind of excellent? 
for us. Okay, my friends, it's time for tips and secrets. This time from Game Players Magazine. I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of quick ones on you. Are you ready? It's time to get the Video Power Edge. The game, Ghouls and Ghosts for the Sega system. Level two is where we pick it up. The guy we want to destroy is that hot shot, the fiery boss. Use your daggers and go after him with everything you've got. Stay right in the middle so when he charges, you can duck him and counterattack. When he lands, keep shooting. Keep shooting, but watch his fireballs. Don't let him burn you up. Next tip, Super C for NES. This one is a blast that'll help you knock out the laser cannon. Level four, when you face off against the super laser cannon, you must take out the laser beams in the middle first. Once that's done, you can move around and fire at the other beams. That's the trick. Take out the middle beams and attack. Third tip, Mega Man 2 for NES. Let's see how easy it is to blow away the dragon in Dr. Wily's castle. You might think this dragon is unstoppable, but he's got a real melon head. So go after his head with Quick Man's weapon. Keep at it till you turn the dragon into melon soup. Last tip of the day, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker for Genesis. Catch every falling star you can, and you'll be turned into a very powerful robot. That's the Video Power Edge. Now let's bring you up to speed with some new games that have just come out. It's, it's a, a Video, video power, power Preview. <laughs> Dick Tracy for the NES. It's not just a shooting game, it's like being in the movie. If you like the movie, chances are you'll like the game. Ghostbusters for Genesis. Now it's your turn to attack the slime and save the city of New York. This one's already been a hit on computers and other game systems worldwide. So this version could be hot. That's just a couple. It's going to be a good time for us gamers, and I'm going to be here to make sure you've got the video power edge, including tomorrow when we do a full-blown review of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, along with some tips for Golden Axe and Rad Racer 2. That's video power. Game over. Your day starts with fun when you tune into Fox 29 weekday mornings. At 6, it's Mighty Mouse, followed by the Thundercats. Then at 7, it's the hot new show that starts your day out right. Wake, rattle, and roll, followed by Merry Melodies, Alvin and the Chipmunks, and the new adventures of He-Man. Every weekday morning on Fox 29.
week. We hope you guys liked it. I know that you did. We are here once again at our time of our new tradition that we have brought on to this closing time here on Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out. The sharing of the art and the yizzle has a wonderful piece to share with you all today. And this is a painting that I did when I was seven and it's a painting of a background with lots of pretty colors and then a tent with random things in it that I forget they were. And remember, if you have any art that you would like to share with the world, just send it our way. Send it to smc.maxout at gmail.com. And we will showcase your art here alongside the Yizzles. Her lovely masterpieces will have a neighbor. And don't forget, you still have another hour of eligibility to come in and say hello to us, say good morning, or here in about a minute, say good afternoon. But make sure that you come in and say something so that you can be eligible to be plucked out of the winner's circle into the champion's spot that would be solely yours. And your reward will be the t-shirt package that you will get from Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out, which will also have five stickers within it. And they are lovely stickers. And we've been thinking and we may even throw something else in the mix. And if you haven't already, make sure that you mash <laughs> that like button and subscribe to our channel. Make sure that you subscribe back for hype if you have not. That was my attempt at saying gibberish. And make sure that you are here next week for another ridiculously super phantasmorastically scrumptrelessedly awesome lineup from us that we will air from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. What I? Eastern Standard Time. 12 to 1 for the closer. That place that you need to be during those times is the one and only place for Saturday morning cartoons and where you need to be for the next hour for our lovely closer, which is American Gladiators. That place is right here on Saturday morning cartoon Max Out. Hollywood. This is American Gladiators. Selected from a nationwide search, 20 men and women have come to Hollywood to challenge our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators champion. Now, here are your American Gladiators, Gemini, Lace, Nitro, Gold, Laser, Blaze, Thunder, Ice, Turbo, and Diamond. The host for American Gladiators, Mike Adamley and his co-host, Larry Zonka. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamly. Glad you could join us for another edition of American Gladiators. We've got brand new events, a revamped Eliminator Final, and we've got 20 brand new contenders who were selected from a nationwide talent search. And with their athletic skills, they have a chance to earn over $150,000 in cash and prizes. I also have a brand new sidekick. 
He's Hall of Fame fullback from the Miami Dolphins, Larry Zonka, and still looking, I might add, rough and tough. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Quite honestly, Mike, I don't know about rough and tough anymore. After watching some of the practice rounds and seeing what some of the gladiators have done to some of the contenders, and vice versa, I might add, I'm kind of glad to be over 40 and over at the booth. You're not the only one. <laughs> With that in mind, let's meet the contenders for this preliminary round. In our women's preliminary, please welcome Margaret McCargo of East Orange, New Jersey, a student at Uppsala College where she plays basketball. And her opponent, Susan Hurst of Glendale, Arizona, an Air Force captain, married, and mother of two daughters. In the men's competition, here's Chris Volpatek of La Jolla, California, a bouncer and former high school champ in the pole vault. And his opponent, Purple Roundy of Phoenix, Arizona, a personal trainer who enjoys competing in demolition derbies. Susan, you're an Air Force captain, and coincidentally, we have several events that happen in midair, so I imagine your experience with heights are going to help you. Well, I'm hoping that the Air Force experience will help, and a little bit of that killer claw image will get out and give me some backing. We might as well get this over with first. Purple Mark Roundy, is that your name? Is this some kind of power thing? You des derive power from the, the color purple? It's the only name I could spell. <laughs> the only name he could spell. That tells you a lot about him. Larry? Margaret, I understand one of your hobbies is riding a 650 motorcycle. Yeah, speed coordination should help me with the power ball. I think so. Chris, I understand you're a pole vaulter. You've had an opportunity to look at our wall. Do you think any of those pole vaulting abilities will come in handy? Sir, I think it'll help out with my speed, agility, and strength. All right, good luck to both of you. Contenders, best of luck. Gladiators, give them a great fight. Let's get ready to rock and roll. This is how our competition on American Gladiators work. Our contenders, two men and two women, will compete in seven very different events against our American Gladiators. Now, the contenders who amass the most points in those seven confrontations automatically advance to the next round and move one step closer towards our championship final. Coming up first, men's Powerball. All right, contenders. Rules of the game are very simply. You take a ball from your end. You try to score in each one of the scoring pods. The outer pods are worth one point. The center pod is worth two points. If you are ruled out of bounds, if you are tackled, or if you drop the ball, you must immediately go to the opposite end and get another ball of your color. Good luck to both of you. May the best contender win. Woo! Of course, the big catch in this equation are three gladiators, Turbo, Nitro, and Laser, trying to stop the contenders. They are Purple Roundy, 27 years old, a demolition driver from Phoenix, Arizona, and he'll be going up against Chris Vopatek who's 24 years old from La Jolla, California. Both of these fellas are pretty good sized fellas, really, Mike, but when you contrast them against Turbo, they lose a little something. And there's a time limit here. Both contenders have 45 hey. seconds to score as many goals as they can, and the match is on. Chris wastes no time trying to put a move on Turbo, but ends up eating a little dirt in the process. Eats it there again, too. That time he got double teamed. Purple gets around Turbo, but not for long. I don't see any balls in any pods yet. Whoa, there was Whoa, a hit. head on, hit by Turbo. Nose to nose, little linebacker action as Purple gets double teamed. The Gladiator's strategy here, Larry, alternate their double teams. First, they'll double team Chris, and then they'll double team Purple. Chris, meanwhile, lost his headgear early on, and he's <laughs> he is really losing, exposed. I think he's losing a little more than that, Mike. He's losing a little flesh on that carpet, I think. Now Nitro and Laser trying to rearrange his face. Whoa! That was one rugged Powerball match. Very physical. Score at 2-1, Chris. How tough was it? Well, watch Purple get the double team treatment there from Laser and Nitro. As they say in the vernacular, they paid the price. Purple, these gladiators play for keep. I see you got a little blood under your nose there. He must have bumped into somebody. This is kind of like a good demolition derby race, only without the cars. I like it. Yeah, there's some semis out there in this race with him. Chris, here's your helmet back. It flew over to my feet. You have that, you have that linebacker look on your face. You got into this. Big guys, big hits. That's what I'm here for. All right, good luck, gentlemen. Mike. The ground is still shaking after that Powerball match. Nitro, you guys are back, and it looks like stronger than ever. Another new man here, another new teammate. 
Yeah, you gotta love this. this. is our new man, Turbo. Now we got out here, we got lasso him with laser. We got get a blast from Turbo and take the knockout good night punch from Nitro. And you do pack a powerful punch, Turbo. Well, I'm trying to give it my best shot. I, uh, been at it for quite some time, trying to put some muscle on the body so I can give these guys what it takes to put them out. I might add, those are some serious guns. Laser, last year, some American Gladiator fans might remember that you had gotten hurt. The offseason looks to have done you well. Back in top shape? Top shape, top form, and it's good to be back. I'm glad to be here, and uh, I think we're gonna conquer all. You bet. So after the first round of men's Powerball, we have Chris with two, Purple with one. Still to come, we're going to have some action in the joust, followed by the assault. But coming up next, women's Powerball. The Fox 29 1990 Protect the Earth Back to School book covers are here. Sponsored by Pepsi, Highland Superstores, Southdale, Rosedale, Brookdale, and Circus Restaurant and Arcade. These book covers feature some of your favorite Fox 29 celebrities, including Elf, Cosby, and Bart Simpson, and they're free. You can pick up your Protect the Earth book covers at Southdale, Rosedale, Brookdale, and at all Highland Superstores and Circus Restaurants and Arcades. So look for them. They're free at a location near you. Due to a high demand for qualified technicians, Red Wing Technical College is now enrolling students in accordion and concertina repair. In only nine months, you can learn the techniques of tuning, repairing, building, and playing. Classes begin November 28th. Financial aid is still available. For more information on a career in accordion and concertina repair, call the Red Wing Technical College, 1-800-657-4849. Check it out. The plumbers and the princess have got new friends. Club Wario is on the air. What are you loonies up to? Satellite surfing. If it's hip and hop, it's on the rooftop. If it's hot, it's here. If it's not, it's zapped. Yeah. Ride the airwaves with Tommy Treehugger and Co. MC. It's a right to show. Check us out on the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Today at 3, it's on Fox. Fox 29. Warning, such behavior is irresponsible, immature, and very foolish. We recommend you try it at home. Paperboy, from Mindscape, for your Nintendo Entertainment System. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, and we are now ready for the nonstop action of Women's Powerball. Let's take a look. And Mike, you're looking at what our two contenders are going to face, Diamond, Gold, and Blaze, and it appears they're very ready to play. And our contenders for this preliminary round, 30-year-old Susan Hurst, mother of two, an Air Force captain from Glendale, Arizona. She'll be going against 21-year-old Margaret McCargo from East Orange, New Jersey, who's a communications major at Uppsala College. And as one of our young fans looks on, we will tell you that the contenders have 45 seconds to score as many goals as they can. A goal in the center scoring pod worth two points. A goal in the outer scoring pods worth one. And quickly, Margaret McCargo has gone to work. She has scored the first goal. Susan desperately trying to find some running room. Margaret bobbled the ball at one end. Now we have both contenders at one end. We'll have a little one-on-one -on -one action. But it doesn't go the way of the contenders as both of the gladiators come through with great tackles. Margaret, an outstanding basketball player, trying to use some of her one-on-one -on -one moves to no avail there against Diamond. Two-on-one confrontation, and it nets out with Margaret getting one of those center goals for two points. Now on the outside, she scores again. Susan trying to get something on the board, and she can't do it. It ends up Margaret McCargo four, Susan Hurst zero. And it was apparent that Margaret's basketball background paid off against our very tough American Gladiators. Here's Larry with our two contenders. Susan, seemed like you had a certain magnetism about you. You drew the double team almost every time. Well, I guess they like me. Hopefully I can turn that around and show them how much I like them a little later. <laughs> I think the Gladiators heard that. Margaret, great job. Busted into the middle, scored a two-pointer. Seemed like you were everywhere. Yeah, I saw the middle open, so I said I should go for it. Had to use my speed. 
Well, speed's a good thing to have out here. Congratulations, girls, on a good showing, and good luck in the future. And who says our American gladiators don't get excited about 15 seconds into that Powerball match? You just raised your fist. You had 30 seconds to go, Gold. You were excited out there. That's right. I wasn't tired. I was doing good, and I just wanted to make sure everybody else knew that. <laughs> the newest member of the female American gladiator team, Diamond, and you look like you belong. Why, well, thank you. I'm very happy to be here with a great team, and I'm ready to rock. Blaze, you're back better than ever, and she's very deceptive. Yes, she is. She's very deceptive, but she's a great addition to the team. <laughs> you guys are like bookends out there. Three very tough, talented bookends, if there can be three bookends. So after the women's Powerball competition, we have Margaret with four, Susan with nothing, and after the men's go around, we're looking at Chris with two and Purple with one as we prepare for the joust. And Chris is up first in the joust, and here's why he wanted to compete on this show. I love the American Gladiators because I've always liked going up against big guys, and these guys are some of the biggest, and this is my big chance to see how I can do against guys the size of the Gladiators. Well, Chris gets his wish right here against one of the biggest and the best of the Gladiators, especially in this event, Gemini, who is virtually unbeatable on that jousting pedestal. And right away, Chris gets the big hit. Gemini launches a beauty right onto his head. Chris giving Gemini a pretty good tussle, however, but he loses his balance finally, and I think that it will be ruled, even though Gemini went off, that Chris stepped over to his platform first. Mike, I think the replay is going to show that Chris might not necessarily have lost his balance. He might have been about half conscious after getting hit three massive hits by Gemini. That was one. There's two, and the third one is coming right there. At this point, Chris not only loses his balance, but almost blacked out. And because he stepped over to Gemini's pedestal, he was disqualified, so no points for Chris Volpatek. Now it's Purple Roundy's turn. He, too, draws Gemini, and Purple has one thing going for him that Chris did not, and that's a big, big fan club from Phoenix, Arizona. Purple giving away about 60 pounds to Gemini. Gemini quickly goes right to work with a couple of shots. Purple loses his stick momentarily. Now his balance, he's finished. Gemini caught him on crate, went upside of the head and flipped Purple off there like a limp rag. Gemini, you haven't lost your trademark. Strike first. That's right. That initial blow is so very important. You put your man on the defensive end of the spectrum. Therefore, he's not throwing blows. He's trying to keep his balance and keep from getting hit. So you come down with your horizontal slashes, your reverse butts, and your diagonal slashes, and finish them off with a jab. But that's all a matter of timing. Gemini. Purple is an old fullback. I know what it's like to have to look out the ear hole of your helmet. And judging from the way Gemini got that opening blow on you and spun your helmet, you got the same effect. Well, yeah, he spun my helmet halfway off and started whispering sweet nothings in my ear and kind of <laughs> kind of threw my guard off a little bit. But I'll, I'll get him back. I'll see him. I'll see him in another round. Good luck, Purple. And so Gemini, the thinking man's gladiator, excels again in the joust, and after two events, it's Chris two, Purple one. Now after one event in the women's competition, Margaret leads Susan 4-0, and Margaret McCargo is up first in the joust. She'll be dueling ice. Obviously, Margaret's giving up a good deal of size and strength in this. It'll be interesting to see whether ice strikes first or plays a little defensive strategy. That, that's Ice's trademark, but it is Margaret who gets off the first shot. Now Ice is countering. Big shot there to the head of Margaret, and down she goes. Well, she didn't have much trouble throwing Margaret off there. She took her off much like she was a feather. Power wins out over quickness. But Margaret will be back. She's a competitor. Mike? Ice, short and sweet. Six seconds. You didn't even break a sweat. <laughs> I love this. This is great. What turned John about the pugil stick and the joust? I just want to get him down because I don't want to be the one going down. That makes uh, good sense. Nice philosophy to have. You're going to be tough to deal with. The Ice Woman. Yeah. Ice already developing a following, even though she's new to it. She's going to get an opportunity now to face off with Susan Hurst from Glendale, Arizona. And I would think Susan's a little intimidated at this I'm point. Good. Larry intimidated to the point where she's not even getting off a shot. She was just frozen up there <laughs> waiting for Ice to do her in, and that's exactly what happened. Ice iced her jaw. Iced her arms, iced her legs. Susan didn't move. Susan, Ice got some heavy licks on, in on you early there. Uh, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I was trying to do the defensive side. 
by the bag. The Marines caught us. It just didn't seem to work out for me. Well, she kind of set you up with three or four lefts, and then all of a sudden, when you least expected it, came back with that right and knocked you right off the platform. You had a low center of gravity, but that, that, that right cross is what got you, I believe. I did my best, but I never got a shot in. Good luck from here on out. Thank you, Susan. So a tough go-round for our female contenders in the joust, and after two events, Margaret McCargo still with a 4-0 lead. Still to come on the American Gladiators, our contenders will have to ascend the wall. And then later, it's the human cannonball. But coming up next, it's Assault. Two thumbs up for Untamed Heart. It's a great movie. It was touching. It was sweet. It just makes you feel good. It really touched my heart. Very romantic movie. Untamed Heart, rated PG-13. Now playing at a theater near you. Eat your lunch, Hector. It's good for you. Teacher, why must everything that's so good for me taste so bad? Out! If Hector Boyardee had never been seven years old, perhaps he would not have become Chef Boyardee, dedicating his life to making hot, wholesome foods that taste the way kids like. One day, children everywhere will thank me. Good question. I think young people today finally realize that these are the serious 90s. Kids today have yeah. come to accept uh, that this is a time for introspection, moderation. You can just witness the new emphasis on discipline everywhere you look. That, uh, that, that's the way it is. Isn't it? I'm not making this up. Listen, a lot of research went into this. last week. What I hate is getting my eye makeup off every night, rubbing soap and water, which is why I switched to Almay Eye Makeup Removers. They take it all off, quickly and gently, and even put on moisturizers and conditioners. The truth is, I just ate a chocolate fudge sundae. Almay, why would I use anything else? And why would you? Welcome back, and we are ready now for our next event, the Men's Assault. And here's what the contender sees as he tries to hit a target located above the gladiator. There are weapons positioned at five different safe zones, which will give the contender an opportunity to hit that target. At safe zone number four, for instance, a pistol awaits. If all else fails, a fifth and final attempt, where three softballs are located behind that barrier. First up is Purple Roundy. He'll be going against Nitro. And Nitro is pumped up as always. He has proven, certainly in past shows, that he has one sure shot. See what kind of shot purple is. A little low and outside. Well, remember, this guy's a demolition driver, not a shooter. Well, he better sharpen his sights soon here. Well, that's Nitro style. He doesn't give the contenders any room to breathe. Purple with a little stop and go technique. He's getting close in. There's not much reaction time at this range. Working against that 60 second clock, under 20 seconds now. We're gonna have an opportunity to see what kind of softball pitcher Purple is right here. Three shots at Nitro. Never got off the third shot because Nitro picked him off. Never changed, the best of the best. Best in the West may be, but he only had one tennis ball left. So no points for a Purple Roundy. As we watch Purple's Nolan Ryan technique expose himself to Nitro's tennis ball. So Nitro one for one, and now he'll try to go two for two against Chris Vopitek. Again, that target you see located above the gladiator. If the contender hits the red area, that's worth seven points. The white area, a bullseye worth 10. Nitro again with a rapid fire. He just keeps pumping the tennis balls out. That makes the contenders trigger happy. They don't want to spend too much time lining up their sights. Chris's shot with a cannonball is low and off the mark. Still, however, with plenty of time. And the shot with the pistol, what was a high hanger, but it hit the red area worth seven points. Yeah. Nitro visibly upset about it. Looks more like a fishing lure, but this little baby did the trick on Nitro. Nice shooting, Chris. Yeah. Got a little practice, huh? Had my buddies come out to the tennis court to do a few serves at me. So it's all avoiding the ball. The shooting's just luck. 
Just setting it in the right direction and hope it makes it. You earned seven points, you hit the target, you missed the bullseye by just that much. Oh yeah? Well, next time. Okay, nice shooting, Chris. So Chris picks up seven in assault, so he now has a 9-1 lead over Purple after three events. Women's overall after two events, Margaret four, Susan zero, as we look at Lace getting ready to take on Susan in women's assault. Lace is ready, but I don't know about Susan Hurst, 30 years old, the Air Force captain and mother of two. That look hey. on her face, it's like, <laughs> gosh, what am I doing here? <laughs> she better get with it in a hurry. Those tennis balls are coming at her at over 100 miles an hour. Susan setting herself for the crossbow. The shot is high and wide. Now she'll move on over to safe zone number two, trying to avoid those shots by Lace. Susan having a good technique. She faces off, looking at the cannon, trying to react to the tennis ball's launch. Another good shot, but off the mark again. Susan a bit lucky there that Lace's cannon got jammed up. I'll tell you what, Lace like Nitro just does not give you room to breathe. You, you expose any part of your body for more than a second, you're a dead duck. The problem right there with the cannon, as you can see, the hand is exposed to reach out for the trigger, and Lace makes it count. Well, now it's Margaret McCargo's turn to see if she can do any better. Ready? Larry Thompson blows the whistle, and off Margaret goes. Oh, a near miss by Lace, bounced right off the top of the crossbow. Larry, we should mention that a contender can still earn points even though he or she does not hit that target. That's by earning a draw if they go through the entire area before the 60 seconds expires without being hit. They earn a draw and that's worth four points. Margaret depends on raw speed to get from safe zone to safe zone. Well, her shooting leaves something to be desired, but not her quicks. She still has plenty of times to go. She's a good athlete. Let's see how she does with a softball. Oh, that last shot came very close. It didn't hit the target, but she crosses the finish line and earns four points for the draw. For the rough way. And how close did she come? Check this out. Look at this incoming rocket as we stop action right off the mark. Then at the softball, athletic ability just a hair off. And with those four points, Margaret has increased her lead after three events. Here's Larry. The wall is an event where our two contenders compete simultaneously, each trying to arrive first at the top of the 32-foot summit. But it's not a free climb, because 10 seconds after they begin, the gladiators start up after them to pull them off. Mike Adamley's up at the top of the wall. Mike, how's the view? Zonk, not bad. This is about as high as you can go here in stage 27 without actually getting on top of the roof. Now, the wall is a difficult event, but not a dangerous one. You can see that our gladiators and contenders have safety harnesses on to prevent them from falling, falling to the ground, that is. But the wall will demand a tremendous price from the contender who reaches the top first. His fingers will ache and his arms will be very sore. The man who makes it to the top first and earns 10 points will have clearly earned them. So after three events by the men, we have Chris now leading purple nine to one. As we look at Chris preparing his strategy to go up the wall, he'll be followed up the wall by Thunder. Purple, his competition's planning his strategy, and he'll be followed up the wall by Turbo. And Larry, sometimes the luck of the draw means a lot in Ready? sports, and in this case, with Turbo and Thunder that chasing Chris fly. and Purple, that's an advantage for the contenders because Thunder and Turbo are a pair of heavyweights, and they're not really at that adept in this event. Question is, can the contenders get enough of a lead to get away from the gladiators? It's going to be that initial thrust that makes the difference. Both contenders were given a 10-second head start. Chris in the red has the slight lead over Purple Roundy in the blue. See what you mean about the hand grips, Mike. Look at Purple, one hand at a time. That's got to be wearing his fingers out. Well, Chris is going to make it to the top first. A great ascent by him. And I take that back, Turbo. You are pretty good in this event. He's got Purple's left leg and trying to pull it off. <laughs> he doesn't succeed. He doesn't even get the tennis shoe, and Purple gives him a little raspberry at the end. One of the great things about American Gladiators is even though the contenders are competing against one another, there's still room for a lot of feeling for each man. And I know, Chris, even though you won, you have a great deal of feeling for Purple and what he did. Oh, anybody who can pull a gladiator up like that has got respect in my book. You're, you deserve a lot of respect. Your time, 30 seconds to the top. Woo! Um, I've always been kind of a monkey. 
no wall or house or anything has stopped me yet, so. Purple, what about that second effort? You had turbo hanging all over your leg. There was a titanic struggle. No one likes that wall anyway. And to have to take up some about 200 pounds of excess baggage makes it a little harder, you know? This wall is tough, and again, it all lies in, in hand strength, and look at the calluses on the hands of Purple. That effort worth five points for finishing second. Way to go. And we'll be back with more of American Gladiators right after this. So Chris picking up 10 to Purple's five in the men's wall, and the men's overall score after four events, Chris 19, Purple six. Still to come, Atlasphere, the human cannonball, but coming up next, the women's wall. They're back. Oh, what a glorious day. With a brand new show. Take one and pass the rest back. Test. Oh, oh. Everyone knows you're faking it, Bart. And a whole new season. Bart, did you read the book? This is Krabappel. I am insulted. Is this a book report or a witch hunt? The laughs start all over again. Oh, please, call me Papa. A little ketchup for your buns, Papa. With Papa. The Simpsons Ooh. season premiere Thursday, October 11th on Fox. Cowabunga! Employers need fully trained drafting professionals. The Minneapolis Drafting School offers accelerated training both on the board and on the computer for now and into the 90s. Day and evening programs, state-of-the-art curriculum, small classes and individual attention are just a few of the benefits that set the Minneapolis Drafting School apart. You can major in computer-aided drafting and design. In just six months to one year, we can have you on interviews with resume and portfolio. So call us now, 535-8843. Those harassing phone calls just won't stop. Call Curtis Walker. I'm even getting collection calls at work. What if my boss finds out? Stop phone harassments. Can anyone help me with calls demanding money? For immediate Chapter 13 debt protection, right now, talk to Curtis Walker. For your free phone consultation, dial 871-HELP, 871-HELP. Call now. Hey, how about a nice Hawaiian punch? Sure. For over 20 years now, we've been feeling the crunch of this funky dude in Atlas from Hawaiian Punch. Hawaiian Seven punch. fruits are blended for a taste that's one of a kind. But keep your eye on Punchy, boy, he'll get you every time. They call him Punchy. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood. Competition ready now on the women's wall. Susan Hurst trails Margaret McCargo 8-0 in the overall standings, but here's why she thinks she's qualified to compete. I have a lot of determination. I don't give up. I face a challenge head on and do the best I can in it. If something is difficult, I just go a little bit further and tell myself that this is one more thing. I've parachuted out of airplanes. I can certainly do a climb a, climb a rock face with a rope tied onto me. So Susan Hurst with no fear of heights, and I don't know if the same can be said for Margaret McCargo, but she is a great athlete, and she'll be trailed by Blaze up the wall. Susan Hurst will have Diamond chasing her. Once again, the contenders compete side by side. They are given a 10-second head start ahead of the Gladiators. They've got 60 seconds to make it to the top. Susan in the blue, Margaret in the red. Both women moving well. Gladiators hit the wall. That has to have a little bit of an influence on your psyche, Mike, when you're on that wall and you hear the whistle blow and feel the gladiators start up behind you. But the key thing for the contenders, don't look back. Don't look back. Susan, very steady, very smooth. She makes it to the top first and momentarily has a 10-8 lead. That's providing Margaret doesn't make it to the top, but she does as well for five points. Two very determined young ladies, Mike. It is not often that we have both contenders at making it to the top of the wall, but that's exactly what happened. And Susan, you did so in a brand new woman's record, 33 seconds. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. I really needed this one. I know. I saw behind closed doors backstage, you were crying a little bit after some of the early events. You weren't doing so well. What turned it around for you? Uh, a good friend, Tish Tillerson, just, she got down with me, prayed, and I said, come on, let's just let it loose and do the best you can. Camaraderie, that's what American Gladiators is all about. And Margaret, that was a great run for you. You didn't make it to the top first, but you still earned five points. We're mighty quick in doing so. I tried to stay with her and keep going, that's all. Both of you were excellent on the way to the top. Now you have to go down, and that's really the fun part. 
Hang out in your harnesses, girls. Congratulations. So in the women's wall, Susan picking up 10 to Margaret's five. And the women's overall scoring after four events, we're looking at Margaret 13, Susan 10. Men's overall after four events, Chris with 19, Purple with six. And time now, Larry, for the human cannonball. Chris will be swinging against Turbo. Purple will be swinging against Laser. Both contenders given two swings, each successful swing worth five points. And once again, the Gladiator's mission to somehow, some way, repel the tremendous momentum generated by the contenders. Here they come. There goes Laser, there goes Turbo. Oh, did he? Or did he? He managed to hang on. Laser having a little different style than Turbo. Laser a little higher, Turbo down low. Got knocked down, but maintained his balance as we look at a split screen review. You'll see Turbo's right leg go off. He sets down kind of hard, but maintains his balance. Gladiators Ready? win it. Now the bad news for Turbo and Laser. The contenders get a second swing. And they both hang on. This doesn't happen very often, but the Gladiators have emerged victorious. A shout out against Chris Fopatek and Purple Roundy. Laser staying high and Turbo going low. Given the physics involved in the human cannonball, this is something of an upset. Our Gladiators going two for two. Both Laser and Turbo. Laser, you turn purple into maple circle. <laughs> well, yeah, I think the object of the game is you got to stay low and you got to keep at them. So I think uh, with the attribute of uh, Turbo, we're going to have a good team this stay, year. Stay low, you did. And Turbo, Larry Zonka likened this event to trying to stop, for the Gladiators anyway, trying to stop an oncoming freight train. Yet you did it with ease, except for that first time. Great save, a butt save. It was a butt save. I, I do believe I'm a post and no, uh, keep out sign up here, and uh, there's nobody getting in my area. Well, they kept off all right. Turbo and Laser, two for two, the Gladiators. So men's overall after five events, Chris 19, Purple 6. Women's overall after four events, Margaret 13, Susan 10, as we get set for women's cannonball. 30-year-old Susan Hurst going up against 21-year-old Margaret McCargo is hoping her appearance here on the American Gladiators will help her plans for the future. Here's what she had to say. I'd like to be a police officer soon, and um, I think dealing with the American Gladiators, it helps me build up for the uh, physical part of the exam, going through the academy, getting banged around, and listening to people yell, and just the physical toughness. Time to get physical now for Margaret McCargo as she draws gold on her first swing. Susan will be going against ice. Ready? Oh, Susan knocking ice right off the pedestal. Much to everyone's surprise. Here we have a shot from Susan's helmet cam as she approaches ice. Ice looking prepared, but suddenly spinning around and flying from the pedestal. What an impact. Second attempt now coming for both our contenders. And here they come. Margaret against Ice. And Ice trying to hang on again. And again, she gets the Ralph Cramden treatment. Bang, zoom, she's off. But on the other hand, Gold going two for two. How'd she do it? Let's look at her technique. Low hangs tough, takes the big shot and comes out the winner. So both Margaret and Susan pick up five points in Cannonball, and after five events, Margaret still has a three-point lead. A lot more action to come here on the American Gladiators, including the final event, the Eliminator. But coming up next, it's Atmosphere, our version of Demolition Derby. Every week, some stores lower prices on a few items. Every week, Acme and Acme Supercenters put a few hundred items on sale. Now that's the power to keep prices down. Check out the specials this week at Acme at Acme Supercenter. Promise spread is just $1.09. Latex facial tissues, two boxes, $1.69. And Ultra Surf laundry detergent, only $2.79. At Acme at Acme Supercenter, we have the power to keep prices down. Rock and roll with the Tanners on Full House. Weekdays at 5 and again at 6 on Fox 19. It's demonic. You shall die! Let's go. It's romantic. What of all the, the sweet words that you spoke? Well, that's just what we call pillow talk, baby. It's like nothing you've ever seen. Give me some sugar, baby. From Sam Raimi, director of Evil Dead and Duckman. Get him! 
comes Army of Darkness. Groovy. Rated R. It starts tomorrow at theaters everywhere. Seems that some boys just don't know how to play nice. So you wanna play tough? Introducing the bold new Ford Ranger. You say you wanna play mean. With its new look, Ranger's changing the rules. The stance is wider. And with push-button four-wheel drive and a new body full of curves, guess we're just not playing fair. Does your hair need more conditioning today or less? Finesse your hair to feel divine. Finesse Adjusting Conditioner. Conditions more on days you need it, less on days you don't. This, finesse your hair to feel divine. This. 100,000 hard-partying Texans and only 75 cops. Let's go, the officer. It's going to be a long night for cops in Fort Worth. An all-new episode, Saturday. For more of the American Gladiators, I'm Mike Adamley, along with Larry Zonk. And Zonk, our next event, something called Atmosphere. Sort of a rock 'em, sock 'em, bang 'em up, clang 'em up demolition derby. The operative words here: smash, mash, and bash. Yeah, in Atmosphere, two contenders compete simultaneously in an effort to roll their ball into one of the red, white, and blue scoring pods, worth one point each. At the same time, two Gladiators will be trying to keep the contenders from scoring by means of their own spheres. And this should be right up Purple Roundy's alley. There he is in the blue atmosphere against Chris Vopatek. He'll be in the red. Purple, uh, a demolition derby driver from Phoenix, Arizona. And the two gladiators, Nitro and this man, Thunder. And Thunder can really get that atmosphere moving. And as Nitro gets inside of his atmosphere, we will tell you that the score after five events coming into this event, Chris on top of Purple, 19 to 6. Ready, red. And our referee, Larry Thompson, about to get the proceedings underway. Those plumes of smoke, nitrogen gas, which indicate to the audience and our contenders that they have scored. And there, I'll tell you what, that was a huge collision. Might have set off some of the seismograph machines here in Southern California. Well, they waste no time banging heads to get things going. Purple has really got his atmosphere moving on a breakaway. Chris settles in for a point. And it looks like Purple might have as well. I don't think our uh, smoke machines are working at this time. We apologize for the technical difficulty, so to speak. Chris is having a little technical difficulty of his own. It's called Thunder. Thunder's all over him. He won't let him settle into the pod for the score. And I tell you, the toughest job may belong to some of our cameramen out there who are trying to cover the action. They really have to be on their toes. <laughs> They're going to have atmosphere little squares on their head after this is over. Well, that was Chris with another goal. He scored right there. He leads 2-0 at the moment. Time running out here. <laughs> Purple getting knocked sideways and going for a free ride in his own atmosphere. Chris couldn't get it in there. Now he's pinned in. Purple desperately trying to score, and that's it. The 60-second time limit is up. Chris doing a little handstand. Here we get to see Purple take his free ride at impact. Gets knocked off his feet and just rides her out. The only fair way to do this interview is to get inside the cage with him, right? I gotta get the feeling here, all right. Now this was supposed to be your cup of tea, pal, because you've had experience as a demolition derby driver. This is our version of the demo derby, only inside these iron uh, spheres. Take the helmet off a second. Unfortunately, you did not win, Purple. Final count, two zip in favor, Chris. I spent most of my time in here looking for the steering wheel, I guess. Anyway, Nitro was good, but uh, I'll just have to put a motor on my next one, I guess. One of the things people don't realize is this is quite an aerobic workout. When uh, Purple steps out of this cage, you'll see how sweaty he is. Wait a minute. <laughs> As they roll Mike away, Chris picking up two to Purple zero in the atmosphere. Men's overall after six event, Chris 21, Purple six. Women's overall after five events, Margaret leading Susan 18 to 15. And now it's their turn to compete in Atlasphere, and there's Susan getting inside the blue cage. I'm sure she's used to tight quarters, being an Air Force captain. Margaret now safely inside, as is one of our gladiators, Lace, and also Gold will be competing in this event, trying to stop our two contenders. And I don't know, Larry, there's no way you can train, you can work out, you can do aerobics and push-ups, pull-ups, but there's nothing to prepare you for an event like Ready, this. Red. Nothing at all. 
Not unless you have a large bird cage and a very large backyard. As Larry Thompson, who's not prepared for this either, having officiated a lot of football, gets ready to start our Atlasphere event. Susan Hurst in the blue Atlasphere, Margaret McCargo in the red. Susan almost getting a point, but getting knocked out of the pod. Couldn't control her momentum and rolled on through. Has another opportunity. But again, rolls past the pod. She has to learn to throw herself back and settle into that pod. The thing working against our two women contenders is their body weight. Both of them just weigh 135 pounds. And this is one event where body weight helps. Both Susan and Margaret huh? Don't have any trouble getting it rolling, but again, trying to reverse the field, throwing your body backwards and have it settle into the pod, just doesn't seem to work out for them. Not an easy task, especially with the Gladiators chasing in hot pursuit. Just when Susan thought she had it there, Gold bumped her out. Margaret, another just a sheer miss. She needs to align her sights a little better. There, another chance goes by the board for Margaret. And Susan, like a grain of salt inside a shaker, there's the whistle. And mercifully for Margaret and Susan, this atmosphere match has ended. <laughs> Tough workout. And Mike, as we talked about earlier, both Margaret and Susan having problems settling into the pod. Great aim, they're right there, but can't quite seem to get it to settle. So no score for our contenders in atmosphere. And after six events, it's still Margaret 18, Susan 15. Who will advance to the quarters? Well, we'll find out in the next event. It's called The Eliminator. There's only one man who can strike fear in the hearts of the mutants. Wanna be next? I don't think I like the odds. Only one man with the power to seize control of the tri-solar galaxy. Only the most powerful man in the universe can protect the people of Primus, no matter what it takes. They're coming for us. Then we won't disappoint them. Watch the new adventures of He-Man. Weekdays at 8.30 on Fox 29. Seeding up the Tanner's budget. Certainly. <laughs> and he's tired of playing the blues. I've got to find a way to earn money now. So he goes into the beauty biz. I'm in the rouge slinging game. And goes all out to win. You used my credit card to buy $4,000 worth of makeup? Oh, incidentally, you're over your limit. Can he ever make up for this one? Find out on the next Alf. Tonight at 6.30. It's on Fox. Fox 29. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, and before we start our final event, The Eliminator, here's a recap of what's happened so far. In the men's competition, Chris Vopatek picked up seven points in the assault by virtue of that shot right there. He also picked up another ten by making it to the top of the wall first, but his opposition, Purple Roundy, would not give up as he held on to hold off the mighty Turbo. He earned five points for that effort. In the women's competition, the highlight for Air Force Captain Susan Hurst was her summit up the wall. She earned 10 points, but like Purple Roundy, Margaret McCargo also hung tough, and she earned five points as well. In the human cannonball competition, it was a 50-50 proposition as both contenders took turns knocking off the gladiators to earn five points. And so the sage is set for the final event, the Eliminator. And Larry, it all starts here. Mike, both our contenders start at the treadmill and must run against the belts. Once at the top, they must cross a 30-foot span by means of a specially designed hand bike. Then on across the familiar balance beam, where instead of medicine balls, gladiators now throw weighted blocking pads at the contenders. But Zonk, the trip is only half over. The contenders have to scale a 20-foot cargo net. 
and then it's a breezy ride down the zip line. It's a great break from a very exhausting day. A final straightaway after that, where the contenders have to clear two hurdles and then make a choice which lane to pick, because behind three of those doors lie American gladiators. And so the stage is set for our women. Margaret leads Susan Hurst by three points. That translates to a 1.5 second differential, which means that our Air Force captain, Susan Hurst, would have to win by more than 1.5 seconds to advance to our quarterfinals. Both women are ready. They're at our start line right now. And Mike, you can tell by the look on their faces, they're concentrating, projecting themselves through this very difficult event. Referee Larry Thompson with the whistle, and they are off. Both women extremely quick up the treadmill. Margaret first to the handbike, but having a little trouble with it. Rhythm seems to be off a little. Susan a little more smooth, but she still trails Margaret as Margaret is the first to reach the platform, and now the balance beam. She whizzes across, <laughs> flies by that blocking pad, and she's on the cargo net already. Susan getting a little hit from the uh, blocking bag on the backswing. She managed to stay on the beam, however. Now she's on the cargo net. Margaret still the quicker of the two. Now the fun part. And that is a blast, Larry, because I've tried this earlier. A lot of fun, but not during the heat of competition like this. Margaret now across the hurdles. Here comes Susan down the zip line. Margaret, one last hurdle to go, and that's one of our American gladiators. She crosses the finish line. She will advance to the quarterfinals as Susan goes across scot-free. Susan Hurst, mother of two, had her chances, but the balance beam and her troubles there eventually did her in. Susan, this eliminator is really something. What part kind of set you back the most? Um, getting hold of the bike handles, I got a little slowed up, and I hesitated badly on the beam, but got across without being hit. Took a real shot on that beam. Yeah, I guess I did. I'm not sure. I can't quite remember. Well, congratulations for a great day of competition. We hope to see you again. I hope to be here. All right. Margaret, congratulations. Thanks. You've made it. Let me tell you something. You've been going through all day kind of quiet, reserved, kind of laid back, the silent competitor, and just steadily accumulating points. Was that, a, was that part of the strategy? Yeah, just waiting for the eliminators, huh? I'll tell you what, I saw on the eliminator when you came across the balance beam, you took a great shot head on and, and maintained your balance. Yeah, I tried to keep going. Well, Margaret, congratulations again. You're our quarter finalist. Uh, we're looking forward to more competition. How about a hand for the girls? And as you take a look at the final score, Susan Hurst could also advance to the quarterfinals. Her 75 points may be good enough to advance from the loser's bracket. After six events, here's how the men stand. Chris, 21, purple, six. That means that purple would need to win the eliminator run against Chris by 7.5 seconds. Both men ready. So are the gladiators. Treadmills are rolling. Chris Vopatek in the red, purple roundy in the blue. Ready? There's the whistle as both men whiz up that treadmill. Purple first. And look at him pump his way across in that hand by Chris having problems. Purple opening a large lead onto the balance beam way out in front. Oh, takes a great hit on the bag. Right here, Chris closes the gap. It's a neck and neck race. Purple, however, regaining the lead on the cargo net. Chris hanging in there. Remember, Purple would need to win by seven and a half seconds or more to automatically advance to the quarterfinals. He's got the lead now as he heads down the zip line. Here comes Chris. Purple over the hurdles. Now only Laser stands in his way. He struggles across the finish line. Finally makes it. And whoa! What a jump! What a leap by Chris Bobatek. Chris does a Superman layout right over the top of Turbo, almost clearing the finish line. And Larry, I think that made the difference. Chris, knowing he was against the clock, did that layout, and Mike, I believe it did make the difference. Okay, I'm gonna let Purple get his breath here for just one second and take a look at this man's body. His wrists are all chopped up. The muscles are sore. You're out of breath. You've gone through seven events. You needed to win the Eliminator by seven and a half seconds. It didn't work out. You may still get to the quarterfinals based on your overall point total. But for the moment, it's all over. How does it feel, babe? I want to go home, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's brutal. It's definitely brutal. It ain't like sitting at home on the couch and watching TV. So uh, it's fun, though. So good job, Chris. 
Yeah. I'm sure you had some expectations coming in, what it might be like. Your thoughts now? I was just hoping I wasn't going to run into someone in the tunnel of love here, but uh, <laughs> it looks like I did. It's like I feel like a 16-year-old girl in there, so I didn't feel too safe. Purple, congratulations. Let's hope you make it to the quarterfinals. But this man will definitely advance. Chris, yes. you did so by virtue of a Marcus Allen, Walter Payton leap through his purple call at the tunnel of love. And there's no love waiting on the other side, babe. Not at all. I used to play Walter Payton when I was a kid. That's a guy with the ball gets tackled. That's why I learned that move. Were you uh, concerned at all when Purple jumped out to that early lead? Yeah, I almost chopped my thumbs off on that uh, bicycle treadmill. It's either lose my thumbs or get ahead. So I decided to keep my thumbs. I thought I'd catch, catch up with him up on the net. Almost got it. God, I pulled it off right near the end, I guess. Chris, congratulations. Purple, congratulations. How about a nice hand for both these contenders? Great job. And there you have it. Chris Robotech advances to the quarterfinals. So congratulations to Chris Vopatek and Margaret McCargo. They advanced to the quarterfinals. And here's a preview of some of the action you'll be seeing next week. Next week, our preliminary round continues as four more contenders begin their quest to become American Gladiators champion. Kelly Peacock, Dale Thompson, Marla Smith, and Rob Botigi. Watch as they take on Gemini, Lace, Turbo, Blaze, and the rest of the American Gladiators. That's it for this edition of the American Gladiators. For Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Anley saying so long from Universal Studios Hollywood. else. Finally, one long distance company figured this out and is doing more for the one person who counts. The iPlan. Only from AT&T. Think of what you really want a long distance company to do for you. Now take out the complications. The iPlan. Only from AT&T. Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. Ask them why Taurus is the best-selling car in America. Why F-Series is the best-selling truck in America. In fact, ask them why five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords. Ask and they'll tell you. Quality breeds success. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's more than just a question. It's an answer. Okay, cut. Hey, Jane, I thought you were home with a miserable cold. I took Contrax and I feel better. You didn't take Sudafed for your stuffy nose? The Chlortrimeton for your sneezing? I only took Contrax. Uh, regular Tylenol for headaches, body aches, Benalin DM for your cough? Uh-uh. All I took was Contrax. She'd have to take each of these just to get all the relief that's in two Comtrex. And action! Comtrex does it all. And now there's something new. Comtrex non-drowsy in easy-to-swallow liquid gels. Friday on America's Most Wanted. Many religious cults are dangerous. Police say this one was deadly, and those who dared to defect... They were taught, if you don't obey the kingdom of God, you'll die. ...were marked for murder. You don't even just speak of. Cults that kill. A shocking true story on America's Most Wanted Friday. So, uh, let me repeat your order here. That'll be... One double cheeseburger, ching. Large fries and a large soda, ching. -ching. Two kids meals and two medium sodas, ching. One chicken sandwich, large fries and a vanilla milkshake, bada bing. That'll be sixty-two dollars and seventy-five cents. We're, we're a little yeah. shy. At Raleigh's, we couldn't make our regular burger any better, so we lowered the price to just seventy-nine cents. Raleigh's has it right.